Yeah, yeah, yeah. Headphones yeah. on. We've talked about this multiple times. Right. Three, Just two, go. One. I'll let you start, Mario. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Can, let me get this uh, the level up a little bit on this one. Um, which one? This one. I don't know on which. On your mic? Yeah, my mic. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I hear uh, you good. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, got, um, thank you for tuning in, guys. I'm sorry. I'm over here stumbling. I'm still trying to put down the Eddie's tacos we just ate. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, uh, swallowed. Ronnie Ronnie was like, hey, I'm going to stop at Taco Bell. I was like, bro, I'm already picking up Rudy's. I was like, man, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Rudy's has breakfast tacos, and they're pretty much bomb. But uh, we're here with Mr. Darmido, the mayor of Edinburgh, a man that needs no introduction. Um, City of Edinburgh has set us up here at their building, and- They've been Beautiful super, building, by the way. Yes. They did an amazing job. They've been super, super um, accommodating, and um, they were able to get us this little private room and uh, to sit us down here with Mr. Ramiro. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good, man. Good. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, what are we, Wednesday? Wednesday. Beautiful Wednesday. Or Wednesday, almost towards the end of the month. Uh, so. We have absolutely no rain in the forecast. <laughs> yeah. And we'll probably be at 109 today. <laughs> oh, we do need some rain, that's for sure. We need something. I know uh, we've got we got to cool down a little bit. It's, but we, we do need it. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. So I'm really excited to have you on the podcast, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, obviously, City of Edinburgh has, uh, is uh, kind of leading the way, uh, right, in, uh, in the valley. Uh, they're doing making all the right moves and, and uh, they have the uh, right mindset in, in our opinion, right? We talk about this at a uh, STBA, the builders association or builders Alliance. Um, and so we're really, really excited to, to sit down with you and, and just talk about Edinburgh, uh, talk about the Valley in general, talk about you. Um, uh, I recently got to know you uh, maybe about a year ago. Right. And um, <clears throat> obviously uh the person that I know so far is a, is, is a great man. And everybody that I talk to that knows you uh, shares that sentiment, right? And I, I got a pack of friends that we uh, talk on a daily basis, uh, all businessmen um, that are doing well uh, and have, a, have a, um, you know, businesses and they're do, trying to do the right things in the community. And, um, you know, I ask, hey, guys, is there anything that you guys want to want me to ask the mayor? And uh People chime in and hey, the great guy. You're gonna get to know him. He's a good dude. Yeah. Um, so, your uh, reputation precedes you, and um, I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. Same. Same. Thank you for agreeing to doing doing the podcast with us. You know, um, uh, a bunch of the people that we try and get, uh, they'll be like, "Man, I'm I'm super nervous. I don't know what to talk about." And I'm like, "Dude, well, we don't even know what we're going to talk about. Yeah. It's just it's just open conversation." Uh, we were actually uh, just talking about the. Have you seen the new Hot Cheeto movie? The flaming hot. The flaming, flaming hot. I I have. What did you I, think? I liked it. Yeah. Uh, you know it. Um, obviously, I like the fact that it's you know an up and coming individual that yep. you know started from the Latino you know, very yeah. bottom and then just rose to the top. But you know it, it, it Latino, but it basically applied to just anybody. Sure, right? absolutely. Um, yeah. You're it right. Just, it, it just talks about you know who uh, one can be. You know, mm-hmm. if you uh, work hard and. Uh, and all the elements in that, I really liked it. Uh, I thought know, it was very story. Just you know everything he had to do to 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 get to where he's at. It's description of an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Right? I yeah. mean, it uh, every day it's a it could be a roller coaster. You don't know you know um, if what's going to happen if this yep. going to work. And so that talks about that. So I think anybody that wants to go into business should uh, well, have that, that have that drive. Definitely, it's and, definitely inspirational. And yeah. he, even if you're not going to go into business right i mean as just as an individual right a, in a career yeah. um the, i think it applies to you as well so i agree yeah. uh somebody asked me <clears throat> uh, not too long ago what would you tell yourself you're a 20 year old self right because they, they had that they were going through some pictures of uh, when i was 20 and i basically look the same you're saying but anyway, you're, you're saying that you're not 20 story. right now i'm 22 <laughs> um just turned june 16th send a gift send a um gift. And uh, so, the, you know, the, what would you tell that guy, right? And I'm, I'm staring at the picture and I'm thinking, man, uh, I think the most important thing that that kid needs to hear is don't be afraid. Make that phone call. Call the CEO. It's all good. If you have an idea and you really believe in it, then do it. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Don't and be scared. You know what I would add to that? I would agree. Right. What I would add to that is I recently saw there was an interview um, with former President Obama, they, they were just asking him, what would you tell someone, a young professional, somebody that just you know, 
was trying to figure it out, mm-hmm. early 20s maybe. Okay. Um, and, and what he said struck, stuck with me because I thought, man, I, 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 you know, I, I could relate to that and I think everybody could. And he said something very simple and he said, uh, be someone that gets stuff done. Yeah, you know, right. you know, because oftentimes, as you know, people are really good about describing what the problem is, describing go, very sophisticated way. You know how maybe something they, they've analyzed how, it, they've how, dissected how something it. Something can't yeah. be done, and that's human nature. It's not being critical of anyone or anything. I mean, yeah. it's just who we are. We, I think, we've all been that way. Um, but he's like, mm-hmm. you know, be that person that says, "I'll take care of that." Yeah, you know, within yeah. any organization, and you know, when you're young and trying to figure things out. Uh, whoever's running that organization where you stayed at that they're going to take notice yeah you know someone's going to take notice and you know if i look back at you know what i had to go through to to get to where i'm at today um you know i wish i would have maybe heard that early on yeah. to maybe but you know i've always had that mindset nonetheless and when i heard it, it resonated with me mm-hmm. uh, for me in particular but i think that could apply to any young professional i think you know don't be afraid you're right be fearless uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, be someone that gets stuff done. Be be that person that says, "Man, Ronnie, he'll get it done." Yeah, you know, he, he's my, uh, they're going to get it done. Yeah, and that right. goes a long way. Who should we call? You know what? Call these guy. Yeah. He'll, he'll yeah. make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. No, I agree with that, man. Um, that it, it take it took a lot of courage for that guy to get on that phone on that phone, right? And, right, and call the CEO of the company as a janitor. But, exactly. inspiring, but, right? but he believed in himself. Yeah. And, you know, and he well, he had, believed in himself. He, yeah. he was doing it for the community, right? He yeah. didn't want the, the, the factory to shut down. He was doing it for his family. Right. He needed an income. And so he didn't want to lose his job. He didn't want to go back to what he was doing before. Right, right. Um, so all those factors led him to that point uh, where you, in the fork in the road where it's like you got to make a decision. And what did he have to lose? You either do it. You're either the guy that gets it done. Right or left. Or you don't. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's this also mindset that you have to have, right, that it's up to you to make it happen. Like, yeah. it, it's not, you, you can't rely on anyone wait or for anything. Uh, you, you have to be the one to make it happen. I'll never forget one of my first jobs that, that I applied to at a restaurant. It was just to be a host and cashier, right, at yeah. the restaurant. I mean, I was um, maybe 19 or something. You're like locally? Time. Uh, well, remember, I grew up in Cameron County. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I grew up in, in Port Isabel. So, okay. uh, you know, that's where I grew up. Yeah. I moved to Edinburgh uh, in the year 2000 uh, here to come work with the city. We yeah. can talk about that in a little bit. But uh, but I remember, you know, going to that restaurant. I just I needed to get a job just in the summer. And uh, it, it was 19 so close. Years old. It, it was so And mind you, I had been working part of that. Uh, you know, I grew up, my family, uh, we're from there, so shrimp and industries there. So since I was very, very young, I don't even want to disclose the age. Yeah, I was yeah. out there in the shrimp boats and working. A couple and, of years uh, ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't want to you know, talk about child labor laws. I, you know, so I, I, you know, I was very young when I would go with my dad and go to the shrimp docks and, and just, you know, work, work there. But this is already after high school. I was just in the summer in between going to college, but I remember... Uh, I wanted to work this place because it was walking distance to our house. I didn't have a car. And so, you know, I applied and uh, they said, well, you know, the manager's not here. Submit your application. And I went back like every day. Uh, they told me normally managers here about three o'clock. So, I, you know, uh, I went back the next three days uh, at the same time, three o'clock. Couldn't find him. I said, well, let her not come by. <laughs> so when I finally saw the manager, her name was Debbie. She tells me, I'm going to hire you, man, because you keep on coming by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't quit. That. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, I just Persistence. wanted to, yeah, and I didn't know it at the time. I just yeah. really wanted to work, uh, you know, at that location because it was walking distance, those kind of things. But, you know, something as simple as that, you you got to have it in you to mm-hmm. do that. That Nobody told me, go out there, do this or do that. I did, you know, take after my parents. They're very yeah. hardworking individuals, uh, my dad, my mom. But, you know, that in itself will help anyone in anything right, right. you, you got to be persistent you got to yeah. figure out a way um you, you have a goal in mind and you just keep on at it it's not going to happen right away you just you know keep on you know we have a so buddy we have a buddy and i'm sorry to cut you off we have yeah, a buddy yeah, uh he he had gone through something to where he he was actually running like a uh, social media platform that was helping people like put out their business right and uh he needed he, something had happened that he he had hit rock bottom with that particular job 
and uh, he needed to get a job, right? So he started contacting one of our one of our good friends. It was he was started contacting this this particular company called Domain, right? Mm. And this guy was contacting mm. him and contacting him. He was like emailing him every day. So this guy's pretty pretty tech savvy, and he had programmed his email to send this person an email every twenty four hours. So every day there was a new email coming into the guy. The probably the same generated email, right? It turned out like the guy ended up getting the job at this company, but it was his persistence that got him yeah. there. And now he's actually one, and, and I respect him so much for, for his story, because he's actually one of the main, not like he's, to me, he's a face now of the company. You know what I mean? Like you think Domain and you're like, okay, Dan, you think Xavi, but at the same time, like Eddie's, Eddie's there. You yeah, know what I mean, no. and, and shout out to Eddie because he's, he's like he's the young blood. He's right? the young he's the blood one that's gonna keep. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't know what's going on at Domain, but <laughs> but uh, you know, you know, uh, yeah, uh, Eddie's a good guy. Yeah, and uh, he has the right mindset. Yeah, and he talk, talking about the same thing. You just gotta be persistent, right? Yeah. You gotta just get it done. Because what I what I read from from you know, I I have had the privilege to be hang, to be able to get and spend time with all these individuals that are very successful in their own right. And uh, mm -hmm. just being around these guys, like you're not just going to sit around these guys. You know no, what I mean? Nobody's just sitting around. No, you're either talking about, you're talking about something that's going to yeah. be productive. Right? Yeah. Uh, co co constantly. Yeah. It, it's, it's awesome. So right now that we, you were speaking of that, I, I couldn't help but think about Eddie and his story when he was like, no, well, and we actually had them on the podcast. Uh, we were at Ambra for that podcast and he showed up like he just randomly popped into the podcast and he told us his story. And I didn't even know that. I was yeah. just like, wow, bro. Like respect to the fact that you didn't give up. And if that's what you wanted, I mean, now, like I said, like now he's, I see him as an established member of that company. You know, now I'm, you know, we're going to throw, we're actually going to have a developer meeting, not a developer meeting, but like a developer showcase this Saturday. And Domain is one of the main developers. And I'm in contact with him back and forth. Like, hey, sure. man, make sure you're getting this ready. Like, we're going to we're gonna have food there. We're going to have drinks and stuff. But it's, it's pretty cool when you see somebody that didn't give up and they believe in themselves. You know, uh, one thing, like how you say, you just got to get things done. You know, yeah. no matter what, like, just got to get things done. And sometimes getting things done isn't easy. Yeah. But that's that's what gets you forward. Well, and, and zero in on something to get it done, mm -hmm. right? Too often times we, we try to do all these things and and it, then you're known as not you know focusing and and so it you know find something that you want to pursue and and be the best you the could best at it you yeah. know what i mean and and uh and that's what you'll be known for and yeah. and i think you'll build on that experience i mean that's how it's happened to me on the different things that i've done uh, i've been able to build on that and you, you gain confidence mm -hmm. in certain challenges that you've overcome and um it helps you and yeah. anything that comes your way, I really believe that. So let's talk about that, right? Uh, you're the mayor, right? And to become the mayor, uh, you got to get voted in. So you got to know the community. You got to put yourself out there. You got to, you know, shake hands, kiss babies, and and do all that. But then, but then, when you get into office, then you still you got to do, right? And you got to make things happen. That's right. How did you get into politics, and why? Well, good question. That that's a question that gonna have to take me back to talk a little bit about Let's do uh, it. things but uh, i'll just real quickly mention how to get into politics uh, i've worked in city government for a long time yeah. uh, so to a certain extent it, it's interesting because I, when i moved to edinburgh i moved here because there was a position available with the economic development corporation um, the executive director position was being advertised and i applied and that's how i came here i got hired um and the thing about it is I didn't know anybody in Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, you know, You're from I, Port Isabel. Well, I, right? When I came here, uh, literally I didn't know anyone. Okay. And so that in itself, you know, you kind of wonder, well, how'd you even become right. mayor if you're not even from Edinburgh? And you, But the answer to that is that I got immersed in the community. Yeah. Right? I came here. I started going to every meeting. There could be any, whether it was school board meeting, was city, people would – Look at me, the audience, isn't that the EDC guy? Why is he here at our meeting? But I was just trying to absorb and learn and get to know everyone. Nobody told me to do that. I just felt like I needed to do that to get to know the community. So got, how I got into politics is I started working at the Economic Development Corporation. I was a director for about nine years. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, with the EDCs, you're the one that works in bringing business here. And um, I worked for about nine years. When I first came here, uh, within the first 12 months, um, 
Super Splash announced it was closing. I remember Super Splash. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's true. H- yeah. H- Hager <laughs> Clothing Company, yeah, um, with over a thousand employees, announced that it was also closing down. And another uh, company that had a thousand employees, uh, IEC Electronics, they were a yeah. circuit board manufacturer. It was a global, obviously, situation where they were having to relocate right somewhere else. Um, but literally, we lost over 2,500 jobs in the first 12 months that I got here. So, And I was wow. in charge of EDC, <laughs> right? So uh, it, it, uh, great. It, it was a challenge. Uh, but you know what it taught us is that we had to kind of come back together and, uh, you know, come up with a plan of how, how are we going to, you know, keep our people employed and grow our community. And so we refocused our efforts, started doing industrial parks to focus on small to medium sized businesses. And anyway, that that gave us a lot of experience getting mm-hmm. to know everybody. In 2009, uh, the city manager at the time uh, left. And so I was appointed interim uh, okay. city manager. Yeah. Um, and uh, and of course, that interim title came came off right away uh, soon after that. So I, I was a city manager here for yeah. about six years yeah. from 2009 to 2015. So uh I mean, I with the city, I worked here 15 years. Yeah, uh, and so people going back to your question about politics, people felt like I was already in politics. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. it's hard to distinguish sometimes whether you're a city staffer, right, that works with the city, because I was somewhat the face of the city. I was a guy that you're, literally was out involved. there trying to. Yeah. yeah, I was involved with everything, anything going on in the city. Uh, you know, we're, we're a part of it, uh, and it's hard for sometimes somebody to distinguish uh, whether you know are you your city staffer, or you're a guy that's elected. So uh, I left in 2015 and started my own business. Uh, I'm in uh, real estate commercial development, as mm-hmm. some of you may know. And I left in 2015, but in 20 during the pandemic, um, I you know when I left in 2015, I, I noticed I, I kind of missed serving the community because this is as a city staffer, that's really what it is, right? Yeah. Okay. Even as an elected official too. So I started thinking about you know coming back to serve in some way. And I settled in on mayor. I, I, I just felt that, you know, if you want to have a big impact and if I wanted to utilize all the experience that I had in running the city, I felt that that's how I can have the most impact, yeah. you know, on the community. And that's why I decided uh, to run. And, um, you know, I, I was talking to my friends and, you know, close. You know what, I think that this is, this, the, the little screen is created like a little okay. static or something. Yeah, so in talking to my close, obviously my family, close friends, they were shocked that I was yeah. looking to run because, you know, obviously it, it's not something that I grew up talking to people about. Yeah. Like, oh, I want to be mayor one day. I want to, you know, I, I just thought it was an opportunity. I just really felt strongly that, um, you know, good ordinary people that you know should run as well. A lot of people that I started talking to, you get the usual, uh, you know, uh, oh, you're going to get into politics. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if that's yeah. You're too nice of a guy. Yeah, you know, it, and so I, to me, I felt well. That's exactly what I'm right. Yeah, you know, we need to change the. <laughs> Wait, you need me the, to be a bad guy? To, no, of course not. Yeah, right? well, that you know, it, it just it, you know, politics could be you know pretty rough and tumble, right? I, I mean, it. It just, we see it, right? But you know, it doesn't have to be that way, right? And that was my whole point, mm-hmm. you know, and I felt like if somebody could me could get in there and serve the community in this way, do it the right way, do it an honest way. You know, don't bash your go negative on your advertising because you're bringing the community down when you do that. Right. Um, that anybody else could do it. Any, you know, because I'm only here for a little bit. I mean, we have term limits. Yeah. And my whole goal here is to inspire others to, you know, that want to do good for the community, want good government to, yeah. to step in and uh, take the reins. Yeah. Um, and so that that's what really uh, got me into politics. Um, you know, it, it just... Uh, I have a passion for our community. I have a passion for our region. And, you know, I feel like, you know, our community, we've we've always been left behind, mm-hmm. you know, uh, as a whole. But you look at the business side, and y'all could see to this, everybody sees it as a place to invest, place to live. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but on the political side, you know, we keep on being uh, torn down as an area that is not safe, that it's not, you know, uh, you know, place to be. And so, and that gets me. I've, I I mean, in fact, that's why as of late, I don't know if you've all seen, I've been talking to other mayors about coming together as a region, mm-hmm. you know, and and, that's awesome. and market our region as a place to live. Because mm-hmm. I feel strongly that because of our location, uh, because of our climate, we we're talking about how friendly we are here, right? Yeah, we're right. very welcoming. Yep. Um, we can compete with just about anybody. Of course. You know I what I mean? And so, 
Um, but anyway, I know that was a long answer to your no, question. No, no, no. That, that's I appreciate really what, it. what got me, you know, into, uh, what, you know, in this role. Yeah. What, what drives, so you mentioned, you know, your passion for your, for your community. What drives your passion? Why such a, what, why such a strong passion? So for us, for the Valley, for Edinburgh, uh, where does that, where does that come from? Where does that stem from? Yeah, I, I think it's, it just stems from, you know, my desire to, to serve others. I, yeah. I guess, you know, if you really want to deep, uh, you know, I, I have this strong desire to serve others. I, yeah, I've been blessed and fortunate to, you know, been able to do what I have done and been able to uh, you know, accomplish certain things. And I, I strongly feel that given the, the same opportunities for others, they can do the same. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 my background is not like any others right in the region. You know, um, I grew up actually in the housing projects and I didn't know that was, you know, low income when I grew up. I just thought it was you were a to kid live, and you're playing. You know, and, yeah. uh, um, and so I think I've, he's I've gonna, been asked yeah, to. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to ask to for you to just turn them, turn okay. like just flip them. No, there. Like, oh, them. there you go. Okay. Because we think that it, it's this is that better? creating the food. All right. Yeah. All right. Sorry cool. about that. No, no it's okay. Yeah. So we yeah, got our I, equipment at Guitar Center. <laughs> yeah. So top of the I, line, though. It's top of the line. <laughs> top of the line. It's top of the line. <laughs> it gets the job done. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah. So I, I think that's, you know, what where it comes from. You know, I, I if somebody like me have been able to do the things that I have done, anybody else could, mm-hmm. you know, and it, but, it, but the, you know, some of us need a little bit of put. I've been very lucky, you know. This is not just all hard work. I mean, it's just being at the right time, and uh, it, it, it's it's all about timing, also. Yeah. But uh, I, our region, you know, deserves the same opportunities as everywhere else. Mm-hmm. And you know, if us now that I'm elected, uh, we have a voice, you know, to represent our region to bring those opportunities mm-hmm. here. Right. Um, you know, and and I I think that that's what it comes down to. You yeah. know, there's so much potential here. Some of our kids, I mean, you see them, they, they go compete somewhere else. A lot and, of talent, man. I mean, there's so much talent. And and imagine if we brought some of the resources here that go to other regions. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my goodness, you know, we, we could, you know, be that much better as right. a region. Yeah. I agree. Um, s- speaking of that, right, let's segue into uh, what's coming to the Valley. I mean, you, you've got your, you know, you've got your uh, thumb on the pulse. Um Anything exciting coming? I know Super Splash closed down. Any new <laughs> water parks? Any new amusement it's parks? It's returning. Yeah, we we <laughs> need true. some entertainment, right? The community need, needs it. You know, um, that that's a good point. I mean, so for starters, uh, we're, we're going to continue to see a lot of the construction activity you're seeing, right? I yeah. mean, I'd, we're all building um, right now. In fact, yeah. I, I I brought some numbers. I mean, I didn't know y'all were going to ask uh-huh. me about that. But this year, just 23, we've already surpassed. Uh, 22 when you compare the first i think five months of this year Mm -hmm. to last year the first five months Uh, i think we're already issued on average in fact i have it here um 208 million in construction uh, permits in residential and commercial and this is for the first five months of 23 right compared to the first first five months of 22 we're at 79 million so it's a 163 percent increase in construction activity i mean it, it, it's and you know what i really like it uh half of it is residential 109 million the other half about 99 million is in commercial yeah nice and so it's uh it, it's very very strong so it's what a, does that mean it's an even grow so far mm-hmm. yeah so what does that mean for our area you know hopefully that's going to help bring some entertainment mm-hmm. quality of life you know we uh you know i remember when i was still with the city when the the plan started and the financing for the bird Ogden arena. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, some comments made about why are y'all doing that? There's a Hidalgo arena. And I said, well, nobody talks about the half a dozen arenas around the Dallas Fort Worth area. Right. Like we should have not only two, probably sure. another one in Cameron County. You know what I mean? Yeah. In other yeah. Words, yeah. We have the population. I mm-hmm. mean, if you do a radius around Edinburgh, 150 miles radius, mm-hmm. there's 10 million people, 10 million people. And Edinburgh, you know? bro. Hold on, hold on. Let me get that number straight. Okay, so 150, 150 mile radius around mile radius, Edinburgh. Which take, uh, takes us uh, to what? Valfurias? Corpus. No, Corpus. Uh, close to Corpus. Corpus. All over Monterrey. Monterrey? Yeah. All around, there's 10 million people. Laredo? Is that um, considered I don't, Laredo? I don't think it reaches it's that. It's not it in Laredo. Maybe it's does, almost. Almost. So yeah. Monterrey, um, Corpus Christi, the valley, of course. 
uh, Brownsville area, all that, yeah. area. All that yes. area, Matamoros, Reynosa. Mm -hmm. That is how many how many people? Ten million people. Wow. See, I didn't know that. A lot of people don't. Of course, I know. It, I, I worked in economic development. Yeah. We're always pushing our area, but even just in our region here, we have three and a half million people. Well, you can say Reynosa, yeah. Matamoros, and then the whole Rogan Valley. There's one point four million just in On this our region, side. Yes. and that's according to the census. Remember, we're yeah. always undercounted. Of course, and um, <laughs> you know so. There, there, this is a, a high growth, you know, trade area. And that's in, that's the reason why I've been talking to other mayors about coming together um, because Edinburgh, we're a hundred thousand people. Sure. That's important. That's great. That that's a big size, good size community, but you know, we, we need to, we need to come together as a region to bring together yeah. the three and a half, four million people. So we're competing globally. I like that. Opportunity. I like is that. that. Is, a, is the fragment. So the way that we're set up here in the Valley, right? We're kind of fragmented. Every, and we've talked about this in the, in the on the podcast before. Uh, we're fragmented in cities, right? Like, yeah, Mission. And then you got, I don't know what Sherryland is, but <laughs> Sherryland. <laughs> Sherryland is just there, bro. Right? Like it's, it's like the suburb of Mission. <laughs> Um, you got uh, Palmhurst. You got uh, McAllen. You got Hidalgo. We, you got. You we've got, got 44 cities. You see. Yeah. So, does, so is that uh, in. Uh, in the history of the valley, has that um, affected us in in the sense that uh, maybe that the population yeah. right, isn't counted together? But no, poss what's happened in the past is we're a lot more rural in nature. Mm -hmm. We've all grown into one another, mm -hmm. right? To right. a certain extent. And remember, you don't know where you where where, where San Juan started and, 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 and far and, started. Right? And so naturally, it, there's you know a, a reason for us to come together, right? Yeah. And and then also. I think a very important piece is everybody used to have one high school, right? So yeah, every Friday right. night, they, you know, Huge. Bobcats and Bulldogs. Mission and, Eagles would fill and the Mission stadium, Eagles man. And, uh, and, and standing room only. And so standing now, room when I was playing, <laughs> when they're watching me, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I mean, now you've got three, four high schools. You do. It, yeah. It's per, not per city, city now, it, right? Yeah. And so it, it's not, you know, like it used to be where it's very competitive. And, yeah. you know, now um, we have three, four cities. I mean, there's some areas in Edinburgh. That are a McAllen school district. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. You know, yeah. zone. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, and vice versa, Edinburgh school district that uh, is in the city of McAllen, Tres Lagos is one. Yeah. All that area is uh, Edinburgh school district. I don't know if you City of McAllen, that. yeah. No, I but didn't, it, I but, didn't it's, know. but it's yeah. city of McAllen, yeah. right? So we have to work together. We, And there's a lot of new leaderships, a lot of new mayors in the region, you know, mm -hmm. the new Harlingen mayor, the new Brownsville mayor. Of course, myself got elected, Mayor Villalobos mm -hmm. and Mayor Nori. Uh, I mean, we're, there's new leadership that, you know, doesn't see a reason why we can't work come together. together. And everybody is on board. It, yeah. It's just everybody there, talks. There's, uh, and somebody joked recently. They said, y'all are so new that, you know, you haven't had time to hold grudges. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, all right, I'll take that. Um, you know, but I said, the reality is we all see and, and think alike in terms of coming together is, yeah. is just better. And moving, yeah. moving, and, moving yeah. forward with a purpose. Yeah. Um, I, I love that. I personally love that because in a way we can, ref we can like uh, relate, yeah. relate to that. You know, um, you, you, we, we used to not really ever have this, you know, builders coming together and, and, and have this camaraderie and, and just like be able to talk, you know, yeah. and in a way, maybe uh, you guys being able to talk together and come together, it would help the Valley grow even more. Correct. You know, like if people, if cities could come together, mayors could come together. It's like, look, if we could do this together, we can maybe it's build this here. Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe that's something that's kept the valley where it's at. Yeah. Without, could be. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could be. And we start this uh, organization, South Texas Builders Alliance, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, two and a half years ago. And with the same uh, thing in mind, right? We're, we were, be we're better together at the end of the day. We are. And, and I think what we're doing is as a way to kick off, you know, coming together and collaborating to market the region, we're actually going to host an Rogan Valley Economic Summit. Okay. okay. Here at the Bird Ogden Arena in August. Okay. Um, and it, it's going to be meant to bring all the cities together, all 40 some cities together. 44. We're, we're 40. We're going to, we're going to come in and we're going to sign a pledge where all right. we're all going to work together. Yeah. Um, it's one region, one voice. That's Man, our That tagline. is huge. Yeah. That is huge. And, That's massive. And we're inviting our governor, you know, to come down and, and to, you know, kind of be our our, our special guest. Yeah. And uh, I mean, again, it's meant to let him know because you know, as governor, he's 
really our chief economic development person for the state, right? Aside right. from being governor, uh, when there's big companies that are looking to come to the state, they go through his office yeah. of economic development. So we want him to know that we're now working together, you yeah. know, and uh, to keep us in mind for opportunities, kind of like when Toyota went to San Antonio, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's no reason why we can't have a similar type of large scale. That's going to be huge. I agree. That's going to be, be huge. I, I feel like the Valley is like a gold mine. It's a gold mine that hasn't been discovered, or maybe it has been discovered, but it's just being put off for, for a later time. But I think that's going to be huge. Yeah, I think the, the potential that the Valley has with the people and the region, it, man, it's, it's key. It's so, ideal. So, to, I mean, I know we've talked a lot since you asked about what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that, that's one of the biggest things that's coming. Yeah. Right? Regional collaboration. Yeah. And that may not be something like, oh, well, that's this business or that business. But I'll tell you what. Um, that in itself, it's gonna, I mean, be huge for our region. It and put, and yeah. the reason is because, us as cities, we're sometimes the last to know when there's a project looking at the area. With technology nowadays, people go online, they they evaluate the area. Uh, but now that they're going to see us coming together, I, I think the opportunities are just going to just expand. Yeah, you know what I mean in yes, terms sir. of what's looking at the area. Um, I see in the future. Uh, going back to entertainment, all sorts of entertainments that you see like in San Antonio, sure. Dallas, and Houston that are going to come here. See, what happens is when, let's say, um, I think of something that's not in here, like an iFly, you know that iFly yeah. in San Antonio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I haven't been uh, to it, but I've seen it. Or or uh, what's that furniture store, Ikea? Yeah, okay. let's just throw that out, right? Okay. Like a major... Let's well, get them. When IKEA is looking at the you know areas, that they're not looking at one city. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not looking. I mean, each of the cities were hundred thousand. Two they radius. Need, yeah, they need a, a large scale area. And so, right now, how we're set up as a region, going back to you know how we were set up, is if you know where you want to invest, you 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 can get what you need. Right. right. If you know that McAllen's the place I'm going to invest on on a project. You can go to the city of McAllen, their EDC. You can get whatever you need. Same mm -hmm. thing with Edinburgh. Same, I, I feel very strongly about that, about every city. Mm -hmm. uh, that They're all willing you, to you do. Can, you yeah. can get what you need as long as you know what city you want to invest in. Well, guess what? Somebody like Ikea or other large-scale operations, they don't know where exactly they're going to go. You know, yeah. they, they, they're they needing to evaluate the whole region. Right. So all we're trying to do when we're talking about regional collaboration mm -hmm. and signing that pledge about working together is – aggregating our data yeah yep. getting all our information together and whereas in edinburgh or any city you can get your community profile right edinburgh has a hundred thousand people we have twenty five thousand households we have this median income now we're going to have this data set for our region mm -hmm. does that make sense yes, yes sir. No, like absolutely. rgv and it's going to have 1.4 million people rgv this many households. that so we're just going to make it easier for people that are looking to invest in our region that haven't yet figured out where exactly they're going to go, whether they're going to go near the coast in, in Cameron County, they're going to go to Hidalgo County. We, we, I feel that's what's been missing. And I've been advocating for this, yeah. believe it or not, since I moved to Edinburgh. When I first moved here, I remember uh, talking about that, that we need to bring the region together. And of course, jokingly, people would tell me, you're not in Cameron County anymore. You're, you're not in Hidalgo County. You know, yeah. you're, you're just, you know, and I said, no, I, 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 I saw it because, you know, I would do a lot of research. I would, I would look to see what other regions were doing. They were landing these projects, and I noticed common denominator was they were all working together. Right. Um, you know, Houston area has a Greater Houston Partnership. Dallas has a Greater Dallas Chamber. San Antonio has the Economic Development Foundation. You go to Phoenix, they have the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, Greater San Diego. Ec and so with us, you know, we haven't had that. Right. You know what I mean? And, and now we work together, We we, but not in a structured way like that yeah. does right. that make sense yes. is there an, an organization that's being set up uh to to so house all that and what we're managing? looking at what we're looking at is building upon what we have in place we have the rogan valley partnership mm -hmm. y'all are familiar with yes. yes sir so there are regions chamber of commerce right mm -hmm. and uh, to me that's an organization that is set up to at it's least kick to, it off yeah right. it's and to do it. I, I just say to have to create a, a new organization right and uh, and uh, when we have that one that already kind of works, mm -hmm. there's already business people that are part of right. it, and communities are part of it. We want to build on Off their efforts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's exciting, man. Yeah, it's kind of a snowball effect, right? Like you were talking. About, once once that happens, then uh, I think the opportunities will come up uh, pretty. Oh, pretty quickly. greatly, well, greatly. And we'll have a a a just like every city a plan for our region. 
right? right. Like what is going to be our focus? What? Yeah. And, and I think one of the more important things is for us to have that, you know, uh, contact with one another, Yes, sir. you know, and feel free to, to know when we're looking at a project, for example, if there's a manufacturing project looking in our city, um, they need more information just uh, on our city. Yeah. They need, for example, how are they going to bring in their, their products or how are they going to export them? Right. They may need to use a seaport in Brownsville. Sure. Well, guess what? It's important to have that relation with yeah. the port of Brownsville. Right. Yeah. And, and which luckily we do. Eddie Campanondo does a great job. Yeah. He's a port director. And it's important to have a relationship, for example, McAllen Foreign Trade Zone because they have presence a lot of manufacturing companies and perhaps suppliers that we need to know of that will provide information to this company looking right. you know, at our region. And so to me, that's part of the regional collaboration yeah. is, is having, the, it's kind of like you as builders, right? Yep. right. You, you, you network and you, you, hey, who do you use for this? And yeah. who do you use for this you material? This who, you know what? <laughs> I don't know, but you call a uh, exactly. so-so. Yeah. That's almost the same thing we need to have as a region yeah. at this level in terms of promoting us to, to have a business expanding yeah. here. Yeah. Nice. That's do awesome. Do you feel, okay, so in politics though, right? You have term limits. Do you feel a sense of urgency? Right now you guys have, a good vibe, so to speak, right? To, to, to put it in layman's terms, uh, with all the mayors. Um, they're not going to be there uh, necessarily, or not all of them may be there right. in the next, uh, uh, I don't know, two four years. What's the term limit for a mayor? Well, each city is different. So yeah. in Edinburgh, we have two term limits of four mm-hmm. years. Yeah, so gotcha. a total of eight years. You eight years. If, if you get reelected. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, 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 th- that's a term limit. But, you know, it's interesting you ask that because, to me, that's the whole purpose of, of setting up a solid structure. Yeah. Right. So, that doesn't, the, so it doesn't matter who's in office. Outlive your, yeah. your, your office. And, and that's the same thing we're trying to do here in our city. You know, everything that we're trying to do here is just so that it just continues that yeah. no matter who's elected uh, there, there's a, you know, we started this Edinburgh 2040 vision plan here in our city. Right. And it was an effort citizen engagement process to get our residents to participate in what we do. And right? that was a great Cause, presentation. Cause, mm-hmm. You know, cause that was great. You, you have two thought, frame of thoughts, right? One is, well, you guys are elected. You need to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> the other is you involve the community. And I chose the latter because I've worked with the city before and, you know, you, we're, we're here at City Hall right now. You get consumed. You walk in here and there's just, we have challenges to deal with that, that it's hard to really think long term. Does that right. make sense? And yes, then sir. at the same time, keep on getting citizen input. So that was the whole point of that because during my campaign, you know, we block walk. I mean, I knocked on so many doors and, you know, I, I kept on hearing from people, you know, oh, you're only coming by because you're asking for my vote. It's, mm-hmm. It must be campaign time. And I don't blame them, right? I mean, that that's, that's unfortunately, uh, sometimes... You the know, way it's how, been done. How it's been. How does that make you feel? Like, if you go knock on a door and somebody has that type of response, like, how does that make you feel as a person when you're trying to do good? The human aspect. Yeah, like, you're, like how does that make you feel as a, as a human? Like, as a person? Like, how did that make you feel knowing that people can react like that from somebody that's trying to put back into their community? Believe it or not, it was motivating to me. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it reminded me of why I was doing this. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, it, it's important that you stay connected with people, right? And and it's hard. People are busy, people, you know. And so what what I took out of that was, th- th- that's actually how that was born, the Edinburgh 24. How do we get people involved? Because a lot of times, like right now, if you have an idea that you want any city, and, and well, let's just talk about our city. I don't want to talk about other <laughs> cities. But let's say in our city, you have an idea of what, I don't know, something that, hey, I used to live this other place. They used to have this. Where do you go share that idea? And how does it get to a point where it gets to the decision makers to get it be considered or to right. even, you know. So we're not set up as cities to solicit input, to be honest with you. We meet twice a month. We have an agenda. Mm-hmm. And by law, we have to, you know, put out a notice of what we're going to discuss, what we're going to take action on. Um, so it's it's pretty rigid structure. I mean, it, it, there's not a way for any resident to have it. We have public comments and you, you can go and, and, and talk about whatever you like. Um, but even that, we can't respond to that during the yeah. meeting. because So that's where this 2040 initiative came up. Uh, we did a survey, the university did a survey for us and we found out what are the top priorities? What is it that people want us to focus on? And we had over 2000 people participate. And so we had a pretty good response rate and. Uh, and so we had a series of things that people told us that they want to see from mm-hmm. streets, lighting, drainage, um, you know, parks, you know, different things that they wanted to see. And so what we did is it created eight committees 
and we appointed residents to chair those committees. And you didn't have to go through the regular process. You know how the city has a structured appointment process. Mm -hmm. All we did is appointed a chair for each of the committees, mm -hmm. and then they recruited residents okay. to serve. So right now we have about 100 residents that meet monthly, Yeah. whether it's parks, we whether it's feedback. public safety, transportation, economic development. And I have city staff that are part of those committees. Yeah. So they're getting this input, and right now we're going through our budget process, and they've come up with a list of recommendations and we're going to include them as part of our consideration, right? Nice. As to what we're going to do. Nice. So to me, that's key. You know, yeah. how do you get citizens engaged and uh, keep them involved? And uh, to me, so far, it's worked out pretty well. A hundred people from the community mm -hmm. are currently uh, participating. Yes, sir. That's great. That is great. Yeah. That that's is awesome. awesome man. Uh, they give feedback and, uh, and then they get to see their ideas implemented. Yeah. And that's huge, right? Yeah. That creates a snowball yep. effect. Um, and it creates that, change. Well, yeah. I, it creates I, change. I tell, I tell people that, connected. yes, <laughs> I got elected and I serve as mayor, but, you know, I have certain ideas, but I don't have all the ideas. You know yeah. what I mean? In other words, I, I'm, I'm their voice to, to hope. If I, I always tell city staff, I said, find out what the city's doing on this. And it's just, you know, implemented here. Right. Um, I, I strongly believe in that. If there's something the city's doing that, you know, that we're not doing that maybe we should implement. Let's look at it. I, I, I'm okay with that. Like I, it doesn't have to be my idea. Right, <laughs> right. right. And, so, and I'll give credit where credit is due. All right, this city's doing this. Let, let's look at doing that. In fact, I'll let y'all know, uh, you know, small business, you know, is, is key, as you know. And we, uh, we're we looking at collaborating with our small business, kicking off a program called Lift Fund. Okay. Lift Fund has been in McAllen for some time. And um, and then Harlingen has some programs. So we're looking at both and integrating yeah. and come up with a way for us to help some of our small businesses is that here is well. that is that uh i think that this so we usually have like every month we have a meeting with our builders right and every month like each month has its own set meeting uh this particular month is the one with the developers mm -hmm. uh last month we had a meeting with lone star um sebi's always been really good in helping us out and uh he said something that mccallan has some sort of um way of helping small businesses where they give i'm not sure if it was 15 if i didn't hear correctly but if it was 15 percent of the total cost or if not 50 percent of the total cost and it was to beautify mccallan it was a beautifying mccallan it was like it had to be in the historical district of mccallan but it was to bring back a business that um was i uh, trying to get restored or something is that is that in the same nature that we're talking about here sure that that's one component i think that's more of a beautification right uh program which is great uh, we had something similar where we help with a facade okay uh, this is more on the uh, giving small loans okay uh to, to small start businesses. a business the, yeah. the, well and expand as well yeah um and uh mccann has been in fact they have a zero percent uh loan program with the lift fund as an example that's yeah, yeah. what they have in place so harlingen has also they created a fund they i think they partner with it's called people fund it's it's similar type of entity and they leverage 500,000 they put aside with one and a half million that that fund's bringing. So they have a $2 million revolving loan fund, meaning they'll lend up to a certain amount, right? And as the businesses pays back, it goes back into the fund. Into the pool. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, small businesses are important. You know, it, it, you know, we're talking about marketing or region. It, it's not just to bring in new business, new investment, because a lot of the new jobs and investments in the area are from existing businesses, mm -hmm. you know? So, a lot of times it's helping some of the businesses that are here convince their corporate offices to expand their presence here. Right. You know what I mean? As yeah. opposed to, oh, let's expand on the East Coast. Or, no, no, you have a presence here. This is a place to expand. Yeah, so absolutely. So when we come together as a region, that, that's the other important piece. Is, yes, to recruit new business, but also to help our existing businesses grow as yeah. well. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Uh, going back to collaborating and um, sharing of information, we, you know, we, we live in a day and age where that seems so simple now, right? Uh, you can share information instantly. There's no such thing as secrets L anymore. Literally just a uh, click away. Yeah. What is a city doing uh, from a technology perspective, right? If, if we want input from, from our, our citizens, uh, it seems such an easy solution now. What is the city doing uh, to, to be able to uh, create that platform for them uh, from a technology side? To stay, to stay kind of so that, that's, ahead of the game? That's a good question. I mean, that's something that we want to work on to have in place. You know, we have our social media platforms. We have, we get a lot of feedback 
Uh, although I did get notified today that our Facebook city page went down. So I think they're working <laughs> on that. I'm not sure what happened today, but yeah. I mean, we have, I don't know, we're 50,000 followers. And, and Follow your city. Yeah, follow I, your city. I yeah. didn't. I didn't know. Maybe that's a campaign that 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 needs to go out, right? Follow your city. Yeah. I, I had no idea that McAllen did that. Yeah. That's huge. Oh yeah. At all. If somebody asked me, hey, dude, I'm on, I want to start a business. I want to try and do this. Hey, have you have you contacted the city? They they've got funds. When I heard yes. about that, I was like, man, that's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That that's great. I didn't know. I didn't know either. On the mark on the marketing side, I don't know. Get it out. Uh, make sure the citizens know. It, it, it's it's tough, you know, to get the word that we're talking about. Uh, through technology uh yes you're right everything is easier these days mm -hmm. but the issue here is that everybody uses different platforms you know, platforms um, yeah. how do you reach you know the most the people possible yeah um i mean there's an argument can be made that you still should use print media right because there's yeah. still people that that look at the newspaper and maybe even digitally but it's it's still looked we at. have we have a, a member in the committee for the gallery mm -hmm. and he swears by the radio yeah, he swears go. by the radio. He's like, man, I, I'm all about the radio. I'm like, bro, I don't even listen to the radio. Yeah. yeah. You know? Is that Spotify? <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think you you almost need to do uh, a, a little combination bit of, all of things, of, yeah, you know, and, and, and have a plan. to. W w and, and we need to do that as a yeah. city. I, I think for us, uh, social media is, is big, you know, and our Instagram, our Facebook. Um, and But we do want to build our, for example, database for people to sign up. No, nothing like any, like, for example, business. I mean, when you go to a restaurant, especially now with uh, off-premise, I say off-premise, but when you order, you know, and, and for delivery, yes, like sir. all that. Like Grub, Grub, Grub and yeah. all that. Uber Eats. I don't know if you notice, they're always asking for your information, right? You mm -hmm. know why? Because they're they're storing that, that, that data. Data is exactly. valuable, right? That's so the reason I, one of the, big, the largest companies in the world you and, know, and, and, just and, deal on data. And, and I don't know if you notice, because often, like, why do they know when your birthday is? Well, because you provide it to them at some point, yeah. right? I mean, it, it, and then they send you these reminders. Yeah. And so to answer your question, that's one thing that we want to work towards as mm -hmm. a city. Um similar way to how businesses do it get data get information on, on folks we have a 311 system mm -hmm. where we do have people's information that choose to sign up uh we have a code red also mm -hmm. to notify people we have to be careful because there's some laws as to what you could send out it's only like emergency situations mm -hmm. but we do want to use any means possible yeah. you know to communicate with our residents at, at this point right you got facebook you got instagram you got tiktok you're kind of your top three twitter maybe falling mm -hmm. off um, but you know, a, a follow your city campaign would be simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great right? one. I like it. And, uh, you can share information in an instant. Uh, it's kind of crazy. And there's so and much And then you can hire, I'm sorry, okay, <laughs> like just be, being creative. And then you can hire influencers that already have, you know, 350,000 followers, followers yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. 350,000 followers is huge. There's this, especially there's, in the Valley. There's this thing with, um, AI. Right. And uh, AI is getting into the world of golf. Right. I have a buddy of mine that's been golfing for, I don't know, he's been golfing for a little bit over six years. And he was like, hey, man, I signed up for this for this particular program where they send you these little these they, they attach to your golf clubs. Right. So at the at the butt of your golf club, you put it in there and then you connect it to your phone. So if like a person that has a smartphone, mm -hmm. a smartphone, a smartwatch, it's tracking your the, swing. It's tracking not just the swing. It's tracking the speed. It's tracking the, the air, like mm -hmm. the wind, how fast the wind is moving. It's tracking where the balls, the balls landing, the length, and then it starts saying, "Okay, your your hips are moving in this direction too much." Wow. So it starts breaking everything down. So as you're playing, it, it the AI has every golf course already programmed in it. So Los Lagos yesterday, mm -hmm. he's like, "Check this out, dude." downloads Los Lagos and because of the way he plays he's like okay it's already telling me what clubs I'm going to use after I hit the driver here so I'm going to hit the driver my ball's going to go 240 something yards this way he's like from there I'm going to use this and then from there I'm going to use this and I'm going to get par wow and he's doing it and that's that's how fast um I think it's been in, it's been at it for two to three years now that particular AI right I automatically said, signed up. I was like, sign yeah. me up because I'm trying to get... Because my golf game sucks. Yeah, I was like, come on, let's go. <laughs> I'm trying to cut the years, right? But uh, imagine doing that in a, in a city census. Imagine doing that where nowadays vehicles, you get in your vehicle and your vehicle's like 10 minutes till you get home. Yeah. How do you know that's home? Yeah. I haven't told you that's home. Yeah. 
Is it because you're resting there? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's interesting you mentioned that because as cities and even as a region, one of the things that affects us uh, because we're not uh, a, I call it a surveyed area, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. Those are very large markets that there's third party uh, research companies that, that survey them, meaning they collect data, they, they promote it. Um, so when a business expands, especially restaurants, I mean, they have a lot of information to go to. Yeah. With us, it's not the same thing. So when people start looking at our area uh, for new investment, people that are, have not been here, they start looking at our data. They said, man, I, I don't know if we I'm could. I'm missing they, a lot of information. Their, their income levels. The, yeah. But then they look at our sales and they're like, oh, my God. Like Simon We're always Park number one. Mall, they're yeah. like $800 per square foot. So to your point, we do need to work on that to show what the actual data is of our region. Does right. that make sense? Yes, like sir. People here, as an example, don't mind driving somewhere, right, as opposed to other areas. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. Because although uh, as soon as the far interchange is, is you know, completed, mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll, it'll even improve that much more. But even despite that, people don't mind driving here. It's very different in other areas. Our habits here are different. I don't know if you notice a lot of the drive throughs and the parking in some of these franchise restaurants is very different here compared to everywhere else. Um, some of the drive through restaurants, uh, I mean, more than two thirds of their sales come to drive through. Yeah. I don't know if y'all knew that. I mean, it just, it's huge. It's, yeah. it's big. Um, but to your point, you know, how do we show the impact of our area? Because a lot of restaurants, I mean, when I was heading up the EDC here, I remember, uh, I'll never forget Chili's when we recruited them here on the university. That was a big thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt like, Oh shit! Like, we got a chilies. We're, we're done. We, we got chilies. I remember. <laughs> I, I, they're gonna put, they're gonna put a statue of me now. <laughs> I, I'll never forget that because you know we were here working on different things and and people would come to me and say, but we still don't have somewhere we could just go casually sit down, you know, and, and and family meal and and have a bar, have a drink if we want to, and you know we don't have a chili. So anyway, I remember when when chilies came here, and, and that that was just a a big thing because. Uh, now we're going to have history of sales of our area. Okay. And then when they came here, they, they studied our area. They said, we think we'll make it, but I don't know if we're going to build that big of a of a footprint. We're going to go with a smaller because, mm -hmm. you know, we have one on Olana. Remember, they still yeah. have one, right, on Olana? Yes, sir, they still felt do, like yeah. maybe too close. And more oftentimes that I'm using them as an example, once they open and they were here at least a year, they said we should have built a bigger footprint. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, it, it, it just their sales are just out of the roof, and and that's my point about how do we show Better that data? data? How do we show that information? Because people that come here, they they're successful. Yeah, and I, it, you see that across the region. I mean, I'm bringing that as an example when. That's why I think that what you're bringing up, we need to figure out a way how we can it's, showcase our information. Yeah, it's right? amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And and the way that you know, I'm I'm just brainstorming here, but maybe maybe a city can have some sort of cloud that all the businesses can tap into and just keep a register of what the business is producing to see, like it's some sort of cloud to where everything is connected to to one cer one certain server. And all the information of sales is just being tracked. And if you're like, I'm just going to throw Edinburgh into the mix is Edinburgh, you're going to open a business. One of your one of your requirements is going to be that you're going to have to have this in your Internet because it's going to run off of Internet and your sales will be tracked on that cloud. And then that could be sorted out by somebody in the city and they'll see, OK, this was profit for this particular business here within the city of Edinburgh. And this was actually net loss. And that can give the city some sort of. Um, understanding where they're at but i mean this whole thing with ai man it, it's it's taking over like when I, they say there's this old saying uh, arnold palmer uh said this once he said if you want to do business with somebody take them to the golf course and the reason for that was because he was going to open up a restaurant right with a partner of his he took his wife to go play golf it was his wife and the partner that they were going to open a business well, now you're playing with a professional golfer. Yeah. So to them, it doesn't matter who drives farther. They're going to play every ball the way it lands, right? The wife saw the guy move the ball that he had hit. The wife tells him, you're not going to go into business with this guy. For the fact being that if you cheat to move a ball to get a better stroke, what makes you think that the person's not going to cheat in life? Mm -hmm. You know? 
And I know that's way out of the topic, but it, it, it goes back to like yesterday seeing this whole AI thing. And I'm thinking to myself, like, if we can implement that in the cities to where you're tracking all the cells, if, I mean, if it's not against any codes or, of course, right. against illegal or something like that, but maybe it's some way to keep that. But maybe you guys are already doing it. I don't know, you know. How but, do you guys feel about AI? I mean, is that something that you guys worry about? Yes. I think I it's mean, already I, taken I, over. I, well, I mean, there's different levels of that, right? I mean, I think of our kids. I mean, I have two teenagers, and I mean, I obviously want them to, to, to do what we all have to do, right? Write your own paper, do all that. AI now, there's some apps where I mean, you could just tell it, "Hey, I need to write a paper on this," and I, I don't and it's care. Amazing. I, I don't care for that. <laughs> um, I'll be honest with you yeah. because you know we're gonna lose. I think I'm talking about cognitive young kids. ability. It, it just you know and. I think there's some areas where I think it could be used, like what we're talking about in terms of gathering information and those things. Um, but yeah, I, I have a mixed uh, emotions about yeah, it. I guess yeah. at this point, um, too I, connected I think, is, a, is is too connected a thing, right? Maybe yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think I think in a way we're all just connected now. Like I mean, it, it's so hard to get out of bed and not have and 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 I mean, granted, I'm carrying two of these devices, right? And and it's so hard because I find myself sometimes at the end of the day, I'm just like, I don't want them to ring anymore, you yeah, know? Just stop, just stop, you know? But it's it's uh, it, it, I think we're all already connected to our devices, and I see it, man. I see it where uh, there's times where I I don't I don't even like to think about it, but there's there'll be times where it's just like everybody around me is on their phone and nobody's speaking to each other mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. there's like a moment of silence and i'm like man we're all in the same room but there's no conversation because we're all scrolling and you you could see it and i'm like is is that wrong because i mean growing up that that wasn't that wasn't normal yeah and now it's a normal thing well i think we're going into a time where it's like uh it's unprecedented right the, the amount of information that's being shared uh it's it's unlike any other time in the in the history of the world. Uh, that's a little scary. It right? is. I think we're all we're all some sort well, of. How do how do we protect the, as citizens? Uh, how how obviously this kind of has to fall on government, right? Uh, does it fall on local government? Is this is this a, a national thing? Uh, how do we protect ourselves from all of that? I mean, I would I would assume that it has to be a, a national or a global at this point problem. Do we have people in place in in, uh, in in Washington that can even understand that? Right? We didn't we have uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg go in front of Congress at one point, uh, oh. and and the questions that were being asked were like, "Really, bro?" <laughs> I, 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 I going thinking talking about Mark. Did you see that Mark and Elon are going to have a, a jiu-jitsu match? I don't know if that's real. Yeah. They they already spoke to to Dana White about it. Is it true? Yeah. They're nah. going to put their, the UFC. So the UFC is going to have a pay-per-view where Mark and Elon are going to have a jiu-jitsu match. And the profits of the pay-per-view is going to be donated to some cancer charity. Nice. Just imagine how much money those guys are going to raise. Yeah, that's awesome. These guys are like the smart, some of the smartest humans to ever live. Yeah. And they're going to have a jiu-jitsu match. Why not? Right. <laughs> Speaking of, are we getting a boxing match coming down to the enemy? Yeah. yeah, we're having a big announcement tomorrow. Fernando Vargas, remember him? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Two Good fighter, of, man. Two of his boys are are now uh, boxers. And, yeah. Um, I'm really excited about that. I Me mean, too. First of all, I love boxing. Yeah. Um, I want to go. But you know, mm -hmm. I, I, and I remember when the plans for the arena to be built. That was part of it. I remember I was like, you know, our area deserves to have boxing matches here, right? Yeah. Like, right. But we're a big there's a big following of boxing here, not only here in our region, but Northern Mexico. Mm -hmm. So to me, it, it's about time. Yeah. It's <laughs> a no brainer, have, right? It's it, about time we have yeah. that. So I appreciate the promotion companies and Bird Ogden arena that, that are making this possible. Yeah. So there's a press conference tomorrow. The date's going to be in August. Nice. Um, and that's what they're announcing tomorrow. Nice. Cool. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. We're, yeah that's, that's exciting. We recently had a, a, a local, a local person, uh, Diego Ferreira, uh, get knocked out of the night in the UFC. Really? Yes, sir. From here, from the valley? Yeah. Okay. He he owns he he owns a Fedeta Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? Yeah. So I mean that they're there. That's real. Like if you're gonna be training with these guys, it's real. Like I train out of the UFC, right? And most of the black belts that I train with, they're all they all train with him, or mm -hmm. they'll go and they'll and they'll go get rounds with him and stuff. But he recently got knocked out of the night 
And it was amazing because he, he What city is he from? He's from Edinburgh. Really? Yes. He's That's from cool. His gym is here in Edinburgh. That would be amazing. Where, where was this at? What match? Or what? It, it was a fight night. It was a fight night. And I, and I don't know if he was already training for it or if he was some sort of uh, substitute. Uh, but he got... So the reason that the knockout of the night is so important. So these guys are getting paid like forty five dollars to $50,000 a fight, right? But mm -hmm. if, you take, if you take the expenses of training... If you take the expenses of you're maybe not making anything. You you yeah. you maybe pocketing twenty five whatever it is thirty yeah. grand right. This guy got a fifty thousand dollar bonus for knockout of the night. Huge. Oh, it was it's amazing because you just made a hundred G's. Yeah. In one fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? But dude, he's from here. He's from Edinburgh. That's awesome. It would be. Awesome. I would love to see that clip. Oh man, dude, we should share it on the uh, STBA. Oh yeah, Let's like it, it, it's amazing. But I mean, it would be awesome. I think that if the UFC could make its way down mm -hmm. to Edinburgh to the arena. And have that guy there fighting that fight night, you know, I mean, it would be huge, man. Yeah. Like right now, the the mixed martial arts world, I think it's going to take over. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many, there's so many talented people. There's so many guys I train with there at UFC that are active fighters. Yeah. And they're from, they're fighting from the Valley. Yeah. You know, so. I know a couple guys too that are they're killing it. They're doing great. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. There's That's some awesome. dogs here. We got some talent, man. The yeah. Valley's got talent in everything. Uh, I strongly believe that. Um uh, speaking of sports and stuff, right? The Vipers, they've been doing great. They have. And uh, yeah, it's great. We need to have that. We were yeah. talking about I love the games. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a season ticket holder and I'm <laughs> yeah. there, man. I, uh, yeah. I truly enjoy it. And we get some really good talent. Yeah. Uh, good the games. team that we had last year, uh, not this past season, the, the season before that, I think most of them went and played somewhere in the NBA. NBA. That's correct. The, the coach got picked up by, yeah. the, by the Rockets, I believe. Right? Or no, uh, uh, or somebody. Uh, well, I, aren't they a supplemental team to the Rockets? The they Houston are a Rockets? supplemental team, right. but but uh, the point being is that right, we get we get some of these uh, 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 players that come down, the coaches that come down, they they play here for a little bit, and then their 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 talents recognized and picked up by some of these bigger uh, uh, bigger organizations. Like uh, uh, one of the basketball players went and played with uh, Steve Curry at at uh, Golden State. That's amazing. Bro, I, I saw him here. He was at, right uh, there. <laughs> you know, he, he fell on me one time. Uh, anyway. Um, it, it's a great thing. I mean, it is a great it, thing. It, it's, it is it's an awesome thing. Having that, that entertainment here yeah. and it's uh, expanding on that. I think that's yeah. so important, you know, and we're growing area. We need things like that. Yeah. Here, How do we get more know? people to those events? Right. Because I think kids need to see it. And uh, just pride, man. I think they got to keep winning. Yeah. They got to keep winning. Keep I, winning. I, I think. It, it comes on, uh, you know, back to all of us, you know, not just as residents, but as cities. It, it's it's a community promote effort. It, yeah. We need to promote it. We need to, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it. make sure everybody gets behind it. You know, Mayor Villalobos did something at our baseball with the, uh, when the, I believe it was the Longhorns that mm -hmm. came down to play. Yeah. Um, the uh, Vaqueros, right? Okay. At baseball yes, last sir. year. And, and he called me and he goes, hey, why don't we get 50 to 100 tickets so we can get residents to just go? And and I think that's what we need to do all yes. the cities. Come for together the football. and promote it. For the football. And then there's football. Yeah. For Correct. the football. Yeah. For the for football. For baseball, for football, the whole for city. soccer. For, we, we've got, for the football. Everyone, got everyone the just show up. Everyone yeah. just show up, take a seat. You know, yeah. like, let's Enjoy go. It. Enjoy it. Like, especially, like, I think the football thing is going to be the biggest thing. Like, that, you, that, 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 it's massive, man. Where are they going to play? That's the question. Where, where, where have the city has the city decided where where it is that they'll be playing? Well, I know that's what they've been working on, and yeah. we're working with them on that. You know, we obviously I know if you ask Doctor Bailey, he wants yeah. to to be as close to the campus as possible because he wants to have that, um, you know, college campus feel, campus yeah. feel that rugged like, feel like what you have elsewhere. Yeah, because it really it's about getting the the kids, the students engaged, and and the community at yeah. the same time. Um, there's so, a that there's a lot of people that are excited for that. Yeah. It is, and, and it's going to be huge. You know, San Antonio UTSA started it, what, about 15 years ago? Something like yes, that. Yes, sir. And it's just 2011. Huge. I yeah. mean, it, yeah. it's it's big. Um, of course, they're, they play, they're kicking ass. They man. Play they're doing the, great. Oh, they're they doing the great. Dome and and it, it's great for them. And well, I, I think the same thing could happen. Well, here. Coach Bush was actually one of the recruiters for them, yeah. right? And he was an offensive coordinator. The reason I know Coach Bush personally, uh, he was one of the guys that was recruiting me out of high school. And then his dad was actually my head coach in high school. So he actually helped me get into to the school that I went to. Um, it, it, I he's a great coach. So you were a North Raider then? Yes, sir. I was a Raider. Mm -hmm. I played for Bruce Bush, there you his go. dad. Yeah. But um, they're I mean, those guys are they're legends. Yeah. 
yeah, they're legendary coaches. They they they're they're amazing. They're amazing people. But I think that the football program within itself is going to just help Edinburgh even grow even more. When does the that starts in twenty twenty four or twenty five? Uh, twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah, first se- season, September of twenty five or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Free tickets first for season. everybody. Let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah, maybe go. Maybe at least for the first game, right? Get people out there. Yeah, it's going to be big. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, be huge. I we were actually so one of the holes there at Lagos. You're you're driving towards the soccer stadium. Mm-hmm. So it's like you get on the on, on the driving pins and your view is the soccer stadium. Yeah. And uh, one of my buddies was like, man, it would be cool if the, if the football team would play there. Yeah. Because it's a great stadium, man. Yeah. It's a beautiful stadium. Yeah. It's prime time. Is that the plan? No. Well, I, I think that's something that, that's been talked yeah. about. Um, obviously, the university is the person to ask. You should invite them yeah, in the next uh, uh, podcast. It, it, can, uh, you, can we jot that down? <laughs> you, this, this. Get Coach Bush. Uh, I'm get sure Coach he'll Bush come on here. and. And uh, he, he's a great guy, and I, I'm sure so glad that he got selected. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he knows the valley. I think his wife's from McAllen. Yes, I sir. Um, so he's got the right energy. I mean, he, nice. he's to me the right individual. Yeah, to kick off the program. So, so the city needs to plan for that, right? Because yeah. it is still uh, it's a D one school. Correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're gonna have people that come into when the games are happening. It's it's. It's an influx of people. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what is the city doing to plan for that? Well, we are working on the infrastructure. You know, we haven't touched on that as a city. What are we working on? And that's one thing that we're really zeroing in on. We have to expand our uh, wastewater treatment plant. We're having to build a new water plant. Um, our transportation infrastructure, you know, we're really zeroing in on that. So that, those are some of the things that we're doing to prepare because, you know, we already have very busy streets, as you all know. Oh, and it's going to get it's going <laughs> to get even busier. So, you know, we, we need to properly plan for that. The other thing, too, is we are working with the university on 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 some uh, projects for student housing, as an example. As awesome. well. Uh, so I, I want I don't want to steal their thunder, but it is something that's been worked on. And and we're here to collaborate with them because it, it's going to take quite a bit to, mm-hmm. to really be prepared for that. We're also seeing some businesses investing here including upcoming hotels that are largely coming to just be prepared for the yeah, football. Yeah. So that's kind of neat to see. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. You know, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's coming and uh, we need to be ready. It's, it's two years from now. Literally. Because with no, that, that, that's going to go yeah, like this quick. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, it, it's just going to bring growth. And, and one thing that one of my buddies was talking about. So um, I ended up going to Kingsville and Kingsville, right? I was running track there. Uh, did two years there. Uh, rad track there for two years and all this good stuff. But what you would see a lot in Kingsville is a lot of the times the people that go to college there, you know, college is a very difficult time for people. It's difficult, one, because most of the college students that go to school, it, it, they're, they're one, they're trying to figure themselves out. Two, it, money could be tight. You know, there's only so many times you could call mom and pop and be like, can I have some money? You know, where'd you spend your money on? Well, I don't know, a meeting. I don't know, you know, but it's a hard time for a young adult and most of the time these there's a lot of uh, uh there's a lot of people that fall behind and end up staying in the city and i'm sure we see that here with uh with the university and uh i was telling my buddy i was like it's gonna happen even more now because one of the hardest things is to be a student athlete in any way or a student or being uh, someone in band or something because you have to prioritize your time with, I remember, so my t- my schedule was wake up at 4.30, be on the football field by 5.15, be out of the football field at 7, be at class at 9, and then be back on the track by 3. And that was every day. Mm-hmm. Two different workouts a day. And it could kill you mentally. And then when you're like, okay, I got to get homework done and all these things. like, And you see people drop. I'm talking about like they'll drop and they start working a regular job and that's somebody that needs a house. And then maybe their family's going to move down because they're going to school here. So there's all these things. And I, and I was telling I was telling my buddies yesterday, I was like, it's only going to make Edinburgh grow even more. Mm-hmm. And it's only going to make Edinburgh need more more houses or the cities around Edinburgh need more houses. That very true. And and, and we have the space to grow. You know, that, we do. that's In big Edinburgh, man, about huge. Edinburgh. If you were to ask me, what is it about it? Well, aside from the people, I always start with the people, right? Because um, when I moved here, like I said, literally, we we're talking about being very friendly area, um, you know, you're made to feel like you're at home. And that yeah. goes for the whole region. You, you're not made to feel like you're not from here. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's one. But we have the space to grow. A lot of people have been asking me, why is there so many construction permits with so many developments? And what I what I like to say is we have so many options for yeah. people. If you want a starter home, you know, uh, it's, you, so, can get it. You, you can get it. There's a lot of that. 
medium sized home, and even large scale you a million lots, dollars. you know, where you want the space, right? Right. You have yeah. that. And and the prices are still reasonably priced, I think, you know, for people to consider. So there's just a lot of options that we have here because of the space we have, you know. So I think that's a big advantage that we have. But you're right. I would agree with that. I think it's only going to expand with D1 sports. Yeah. Uh, now the whole band also, I think, is yes, going to be part of that. It, and you're right. They're, they're the same as football because they're having to go practice. Yeah. To, if not worse, you know, <laughs> I, my daughter's band schedule was <laughs> crazy. We had to go out of town in June because once July hits, that's it. She's going to be busy every day. She does the March July, event? August. Yeah. yeah. So it's essentially her school year starting. My kids both do uh, the drum line, so yeah. I, I hear you. Yeah, uh, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it, it, it's very, very busy. They yeah, got to wow. jog. They got to. They got to jog, right? They got to. They got to work out because, I mean, it's strenuous. Yeah. Uh, you, you would think band, you know. Uh, but you know that, that, and then you're walking as you're playing and stuff. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, all those things I think will help them down the road. Of course, you know, yes, like, sir. I'm sure it's helped you. That schedule, I I remember, and, and I played sports in high school, not in, in college, but I remember my senior year in college, I was back in Brownsville. I finished there at the UT Brownsville, and I was a finance major. And I'll never forget this. I got selected to do an internship with uh, a banking internship. So mm -hmm. it was four of us students that got selected while I was working at a restaurant, right, that whole time. But I'll never forget that last year that I got selected at an internship. I had to, so my Monday through Friday was, it, I was thinking about that when you're talking about your schedule for a uh, student athlete. So at eight o'clock, I had to report to a bank. I was going through a management trainee program mm -hmm. as if you're going to a banking profession. So eight to 12 every day, you know, go, go to a bank, report a bank. Uh, I never put a tie on, so I had to learn how to put on yeah, a tie. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, at 12, then I just pick up something to eat on the way or something. And then I, I take classes in the afternoon every day. And in the evening, I was working at the restaurant, right? Wow. And I remember thinking, because there was something every day, right? On Saturdays, I worked two shifts at the restaurant where I worked at from the morning till closing, probably 10, 11 at night. Then on Sundays, I remember I only worked, I say only, it was from 11 to 4. Um, so after 4 on Sundays, the only time I had to catch up, wash my clothes, and, you know, just do what I could to get ready for the week. And I remember thinking, if I can get through this this one year i think i could do just about anything yeah. <laughs> right yeah, I remember right, thinking that. right. And yeah. you know what there's it's a lot called to, the sacrifice there's right? a lot to be said about that yeah. right yeah. and i know sometimes it gets tough for young you know folks uh on these schedules but man it, it really could build you you know for for the future yeah i, I really believe that yeah. yeah and it's like you said just get just get stuff done from right. the beginning right just get stuff done and be a doer yes sir be a doer, be a doer not yeah. a complainer <laughs> <laughs> and move forward well it, it, you know it, it's something to be said about it see it's, it's easy to say but it, it is true you know just be someone that could you know wants to figure it out and and just to get something done i remember uh, i've applied it in almost everything i've done that's why when president obama said that i said man i i never heard it or have yeah. it described that way but i even up to this day here with the city you know we celebrate oh we just opened this i'm like what's next what are we working on yeah. what, what are we you know you just have to continue. Um, the work never ends. Somebody asked me recently, so how is it being mayor? And I said, I, I see, you feel like, yes, you're, you're getting things done, but your work doesn't end yeah. because the city's needs just are so much, right? Yeah, that it's never, it's a, never Anything ending. you're doing, it, it's never ending. And all you can do is do the best you can, but make sure you continue to listen to residents, right? Yeah. I, I think that's important. Um, I mean, I almost everybody has my cell number. I, I get, yeah. It, yeah, I tell people, you know, you can call 311, which is a, you no, can record call you. this. They're like, well, I still want to call. I said, you can continue calling me. <laughs> I never uh, thought in my life I'd be, I'd be calling the, the mayor of Edinburgh yeah. ever, bro, it's in my extremely life. Extremely accessible. I'm just like texting with this. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, so I, I, it's important. I, I, you know, a lot of times people, uh, you know, want to make sure that they know that they can just call you and, and uh, I mean, I go when I go to HB, I literally I almost take like a notepad because I get people, hey, there, there's this, you know, pile of debris in the street, or there. I, I was like, I, I need the address, and I, yeah. So I leave there and I and send it to our city manager, but uh, it just doesn't end. But I you enjoy think that, our you know? jobs are tough? Can you imagine? <laughs> I can't. He can't even go to HB without having to take notes. <laughs> That's awesome. So what I do is I, I normally, if I don't take notes, I, I text it to myself. I, yeah. I send myself a text right. of, of things, uh, but. 
it's just the way it is. I, I, you know, what I like to tell people is I, I, there's no, uh, uh, room for me to complain. Right. Because I knew exactly what I was getting into. Sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've worked at the city. I've, I've, uh, so I, and then for me, I, I, I like to tell people also, there's a, another layer of pressure for me because I can't get away with, well, give me some time. I, I'm just getting in, and I, I've already been at the city. Yeah. <laughs> so no, no, no. for me, you, it's like you're supposed you to already know. You were there when we made the decision. So yeah, you, you're supposed to already know. And so yeah. I, I, but you know, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, it, it is a lot of work. It's you know, time away from your family, from your business. Um, but at the end of the day, that's why I decided to do it. You yeah. Know, it's just about improving our community and uh, making the most impact you can have. Yeah. And I think uh, every, uh, everybody that I know that knows you uh, that that does business with the city of Edinburgh would uh, share this sentiment, man. You guys are doing a kick-ass job. I have a, I have a, so there's f- people that are listening and all that. Yeah, yeah, stuff. I got some questions. I guess, I, I, I'm just going to, I mean. It, th- Let's th- just take, put them out there. Yeah, yeah, because. And, and as a matter of fact, if you have any questions uh, and you're listening to the podcast, put them on Facebook. Put them on Facebook. Please just let us know if anybody uh, uh, asks anything. And it's just to add to the conversation. So uh, this question came in and um, they want to know, um, you know how there was a tax increase in the city of Edinburgh. Uh, the question is if it was due to the development and the growth that's going on. Their question is, um, the tax, the taxes, and the projections were they the increase due to the development that's going on within the city? That's the question. So, but just to clarify, so we have not increased taxes, uh, but uh, in fact, we lowered them last yeah. year for the first time since 1996. And I'm talking about the tax rate, just to be clear, right? Okay. Um, the city we, tax rate. So, yeah. yeah. So what happened is in 2019, the tax rate was. Remember how taxes are derived. You have your Property values, let's mm-hmm. say your home is valued 100000 right? Our tax rate for the city for like 20 years straight, and I know because I was with the city and I was city manager, we always maintain the same tax rate, was 63 and a half cents, right? And um, so for a $100,000 home, I mean, what is that? Uh, $635? $635, dollars right? Well, as you know, uh, by law, the appraisal district is who values your home. So whatever the appraisal district values your home, you multiply that times that tax rate. Okay. So we've always, because of the growth that we've had, even when I was city manager, we we always maintain the same tax rate so that we don't do a double whammy, I'll call it, on our residents, meaning your values are increasing, meaning naturally your taxes are So that's grow, that's what happened but, but to the people your, but, asking. But your tax rate stays the same so that it, it doesn't impact you as much. So in 2019, and I'll be honest with you, that's part of the reason why I decided to run, the tax rate was increased for the first time. Mm-hmm. In twenty some years uh, to sixty eight cents, four and a half cents, um, and I, I just I, I got really frustrated because I know how our city finances work. I was city manager. Mm-hmm. I I was in charge of balancing the budget, and and I know how the numbers work. And in twenty nineteen, uh, I mean, our city was growing. There was mm-hmm. no need, right. in my opinion, to increase that tax rate. Naturally, the values are increasing, so you're getting more taxes. Right. Does that make sense? So, yes. right. yep. um, so one of the first things I did when I became uh, became mayor, I told the council, uh, we need to reduce the tax rate. And, of course, they were just kind of like, well, we have all these needs. Yes, you do. doesn't mean we have to, you know, uh, not think about and not address needs. It's a matter of priorities. Yeah. I, and I know how it works because I was city manager, and I normally had a checklist of things to ask the, the elected officials when we would start working on the budget. And I, the first one was, what about our tax rate? Are you going to want to keep it the same, increase or lower it? Because to me, once I knew that, I, I knew what I had to work with to balance the budget. Sure. Does that make right. sense? So I told the council, we just need to start with, we're going to reduce our tax rate. And I want to reduce it by four cents. I want to mm-hmm. give it back to the yeah. residents. Yeah. You know? And it was tough because we have a lot of needs, but it's about being efficient with our budget too. Mm-hmm. You know, reducing costs that we don't need to have on operations and things like that, you yep. know? And, and so we reduced it four cents. So that was, uh, for the, this new, uh, budget year, which is 22, 23, which ends September 30th, our fiscal year goes from October 1st, September 30th. Okay. And so what was happening now, I think where the question's coming in. So I'm sorry. I, I just have to explain it. Cause no, I don't no, no, want no. anybody to get misinformed. Let's make this anything. clear. We yeah. lowered it. We lowered the tax rate. <laughs> so, this last couple months, everybody got their notices from the appraisal district. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what everybody's referring to. And that's to. what it is. And yeah. so yeah. the values have, have gone up. And so if you were to ask me, what is it attributed to? Well, that's attributed to 
what the market is. Right. Does that make sense? Right. Uh, yes, sir. You have people investing in fourplexes and homes and all that that are paying what is being asked of them. Right. Right. Uh, and or, or plus more. Right. And so what does that do? The appraisal district by law has to evaluate all the properties and be at the 95 percentile of the area's market. And if they don't, guess what? The tax entity, we have to pay that back. Mm. Okay. So they're audited our local appraisal district to ensure that what they're assessing all the properties, right? Residential and commercial or at least at the 95 percentile of the area. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yes, so, mm -hmm. And so that's what's gone up now. Uh, that's on the appraisal notice. And now it's on us as a city because we're going through the budget right now to set a tax rate. So mm -hmm. we're going to be doing that in August. Right. So I've already told the council guys, the appraisals have gone up. Yeah. We really need to look at the citizens our, are feeling the pinch. Are, are reducing our tax rate. Right. right? Yeah. So that so you can compensate for that. To try to. Yes, yeah. sir. And I say try to because it's it's a big commit responsibility. Yeah. You know, we're, we're here. Have, I mean, we you just still want to get things done well, and they yeah, cost money. We, right? we just had a budget work session with all our departments. And I mean, we have a long list of things that need to be done for the city. So but to me, like I told council, we need to come up with a balance uh, because uh, we do need to, you know, be sensitive to the fact that, you know, there's people there with, for example, that are retired. The only source of income they it's can't set. afford, yeah, you know, to, to pay you know additional tax. So yeah. we, we need to come up with a, a fine. So I'm not sure if that's answering the question, but just know that what's been out there thus far is the appraisal values. Right. Yeah. Um, we're going to know by next month because they got to be certified by the appraisal district uh, where those are really set. Because I think people protest, you know, they're. But to me, I'm all about tax relief. Uh, in fact, that's when the legislature part of the legislative agenda was. Mm -hmm number one priority provide tax relief right yeah and uh and if there's a way for us to con you know provide that additional savings we're going to do it and that, and that's thank you for answering the question because i mean i didn't know that mm -hmm. so that that to me is and, is and, great and you're not supposed to know that to be honest with you, because you're not in city government right. Right? right to be fair that's why i'm always explaining things because what i've learned is you need to explain it because you can't assume people know. You, you, yeah. That's why I say you're not supposed to know. I mean, it, it's uh, some of us that are in elected why office yeah. barely know, right? Yeah. Like, but I'm always trying to explain this to people because it's important. Education. You know, it, it's it, I like going based on facts, not on you know, poli political rhetoric mm -hmm. or saying the right no. I I've been at the city. I I know how it works, and 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 we're here to do things right for people. And and but mm -hmm. they got to know the information, so, you know, the facts. Yeah. This past so. With the boom that happened, right in the in the real estate world, and you had houses, you know, we, I, I see houses, you know, I, I'm, I'm a builder, uh, I build, I am also, I have, I got my real estate license, and I also have my lending license. Um, I like to stay um, as active as I can and learn, you know. That's why, to me, what you, the information you just gave is is amazing. There was a time um, that. And, and it's still happening, and I see it right now. Um, there's houses that are selling at over 500000 right? Let's just give a number. And at the time, as, as a real estate agent, you're like, yes, you know, I'm selling this at 500000 I'm selling this at five seventy five, six hundred thousand. 600000 But now that you're telling me that, and you're like, okay, this house was worth four fifty, and I'm pushing it at five fifty, or I'm pushing it at six hundred. But it was worth four fifty, four seventy five, three, four years ago, five years ago. That within itself is affecting the taxes for that particular well, well the appraisals that yeah, are coming in. The appraisals and the tax, you're right. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and it is, and that's why I I you know, I get a lot of calls. Believe me, once the appraisal notices started hitting people's homes, I mean bing, I, bing, I, bing, I started getting yeah. calls and you know, I try to and I, I feel for folks because they're right, because you know, their argument is I haven't even done anything in my home, right? How in the world is, uh, you know, the value going up? And so, you know, obviously try to explain the, the, the situation in, in the market itself. I mean, it, uh, uh, it is, it's unfortunate for folks that don't plan to sell, that that's where you live, that, that you know, you're not planning to sell, but yet your value is going up. But it's largely just because of the market. And I right. hate to just blame it on, let's say, your neighborhood or your area. It's just the market. It's, I mean, it's, uh, it's society that we live in, right? Yeah, it's a free market yeah. society. It, it's a market and uh, that our area is growing. And, uh, you know, even with these increases, uh, it still is obviously a very, very affordable place. But even know? then, like, it's good to have 
a mayor such as yourself that's like hey you know this, he, yeah like you're you're able to see that and you're like okay the, the appraisals are going up we need to watch out how we manage our taxes I think that's part of our responsibility yeah. you know and and but at the same time we do need to address you know the needs in our city we're growing there's a lot more you know demands on our roadways on our everything everything that we do and so we need to keep even like permits for example like mm-hmm. making sure we have the right amount of staff to process all the i mean last year i was told there was about 2500 lots that got developed with over mm-hmm. i don't know 60 subdivisions right and this year we're on pace to have close to 4000 you know so wow. think about that for a moment it's just so the workload yeah so we, we got to make sure we plan accordingly you yeah know? it's awesome yeah. so jaime reina knows you i think he's a portisville uh yeah. uh native shout out Shout Hyman. out to Hyman, good friend of mine as well. Uh, speaks very highly of you also, Mr. Mayor. Uh, he's got a question. Uh, the Valley uh, was just awarded $150 million for roads at the last legislator. What are we doing with that? What's the plan? Good question, Hyman. And, uh, I'm glad you're tuning in. So, yeah. uh, oh, he's listening. I'm, I'm, I'm He's an him. avid I'm, listener. I've known him a long time, so yeah. we won't get into all the stories. But uh, <laughs> I'll ask him later. Uh, but um, so, yeah, that's a good question. That I think what is being asked is has to do with the governor just making a big announcement. Was it yesterday? I think on mm-hmm. the uh, 150 million dollars of funds for the it, it's called IBTC International Br- uh, Bridge uh, Trade Corridor. So, if you notice. Far Bridge is really the main commercial right now bridge for commercial trucks. Mm-hmm. That most of them come through there. Um, they have to go through our roadways. They come through Cage or they go through Jackson Road, yep. which is a designated truck route, make its way either to McAllen Foreign Trade Zone or, uh, and then eventually head north mm-hmm. on 281. So, what is that money for? That's for a a, a new route, a new roadway that's that's being built um, west, uh, excuse me, east of the Far Bridge that goes through. I believe San Juan area between San Juan and Alamo, and it's going north all the way past Monte Cristo to our airport. Nice. Okay, so this funding will at least cover the area between the bridge, I believe, up to uh, Interstate Two, if not farther. Um, but the the whole plan is to divert truck traffic, yeah. so they don't you have know. to go through the city. Exactly. Yeah. So it's huge. That's yeah. a big impact. Excuse me, real quick. I really uh, appreciate. Uh, you know, the governor and the state leadership uh, prioritizing that, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, uh, it, it's it's such a, it's going to be a big impact to our region. What does it mean? It, it means that there's going to be improved mobility, right, mm-hmm. for our region. It means there, there's going to be more business, I think, coming to the area. And I think it's just going to uh, just improve mm-hmm. on how we're growing, yeah. you know, because 281 is just, you know, what's well, an interstate now, I-69, um it, it it's heavily used already yeah and, uh, we need we need this relief route yeah. i feel like that that interchange is going to get done here pretty soon yes uh and it could need to be remodeled again right the traffic that goes through there is unbelievable i know uh, it's it, good to see it, it is it's, it's and, and it's about progress and yeah. uh and we just need more of it one of the things that i'd like to see happen beyond that is uh one thing that i've been advocating for a long time is we we're probably the only area with a million people that is not connected to an interstate. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? So we have an interstate designated roadway, like 281 is now I-69 right. Central, 77 is I-69 East, and then you have US-83, which is now known as Interstate 2, right? Gotcha, okay. Um, but yet, you go north on I-69 Central, which is 281, and it stops at Monte Cristo in terms of the interstate right. designation. And we're, we don't have interest until you hit I-37, yeah. right, in, uh, between Corpus and San Antonio. That, that's a big disadvantage for us. And, and why is that? Well, when you have, so it's U.S. Highway. When there's a company that produces a product or a part that they want to supply to a manufacturer somewhere, when they submit a quote, mm-hmm. part of the checklist is that they, all right, how are you going to get there? I'm going to go from the valley to, let's say, uh, uh, Michigan, right? And I'm going to use interstate to start up, but then I go U.S. highway. So the pricing for transportation on their trucks is a lot more in a U.S. highway than in an interstate. Gotcha. So if there were to be a uh, nonstop interstate access from here connecting us, then there, there, that'd be that much more competitive. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so as absolutely. a region, we're just that much more competitive. 
And all an interstate is, is a main roadway with service roads. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's why north, you know, it's a lot rural in nature. Right. Um, the interstate cannot have a rural roadway connect directly to the interstate. It's got to connect to a service road. Gotcha. Okay, so that that's the description. However, I know it's going to be so expensive. There's it been a is, lot of yeah. I'm, th I'm thinking about the, the miles, thing, right? That's a lot. But there's ways around that, I think, uh, by excluding, for example, certain areas because of ranch country, right? Um, I mean, you can't tell me there's no areas around the country where there's a rural road that's not an interstate. There is. Yeah. And they got a category exclusion where they were able to get kind of like locally, you get a variance, right? Yeah. Uh, on, 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 on an ordinance or a requirement. Same thing can be done here. So to me, uh, we need to work on that. How yeah. do we connect the valley to an interstate system yeah. that will be a nonstop uh, interstate connection? Uh, and you do that uh, with the cities working together? City, that's right. That's one of the things that could happen by the cities working together. I think our legislators and mm -hmm. uh, our Congress people also. Um, it, it's, you know, but this here with this announcement is big. Um, yeah. it, it's something that'll help us uh, with that argument, if yeah. you will. You know. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah. That's just so much growth. Any questions on the the taxes? So, yeah, we talked about your term, right? And uh, uh, like I said, you guys, I think you guys are doing a great job, and I think a lot of people share that sentiment. Um, uh, so, to, let, let's say uh, we do our max term, right? And you uh, you got your second uh, second term um, ahead of you. At the end of your service, right? What would you? What are you? What uh, in your mind? What do you? What would you consider? a successful mayorship? Well, that's a good question. So I think to me, uh, any success would have to be seeing, uh, like I started talking, other people that are not political in nature, you know, step in and, and want to just carry on the plan that we have in place to just improve our city. Um, I know that sounds very general in nature, but I mean that because too often times um, when you get into politics, if you get in it for the wrong reasons, meaning you just want power, you just want the title, Influence. that's not a good thing. You know, I, I, my opinion, you know, you're, we're here to serve the community. And you could see that in people genuinely if they're, you know, wanting to do that. Um, so to me, uh, there's got to be stability. You know, I, I felt like... Uh, in our city in itself, I mean, there was some instability when there was change of mayorship back in 2017. Mm -hmm. And those four years, it's just, you know, we were in the front page for the wrong reasons, right? right. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just not a good thing. So to me, it's, we have a plan in place that's, you know, bring the community together. Let's, you know, address the needs that we have in place, but at the same time, have a, a, uh, a structure where, uh, Anybody can come in yeah. and, and assume that uh, leadership and just yeah. carry on forward. Like you see in a lot of cities, just sure. continue that stability. You know, you know the, the 100 people that are now involved yeah. in the city, uh, it just takes one yeah. for it to spark and say, you know what, man, I, I want to I I serve. Yeah. Right? Uh, and, and, and I will tell you, it, me saying this sounds easy, sound, and it's not. It's because not. Look, no, it, for, for us as elected officials, you know, once you get elected, um, I mean, you know, right away you start being approached because now you got elected, right? right. And so, you know, I right away started getting approached like, well, what are you going to run for next? What do you, you know, so I think sometimes the problem that we have in politics is that, you know, you get into office and there's this assumption that, oh, you got into office, you, you just, you know, politics in your blood, you, you want to carry on to the next position or that position. And I, I don't see things that way. The good thing for me is I'm pretty grounded. I, I worked at the city for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I'm only doing this because, because remember, we don't get paid. Right. <laughs> it's not like a career. It's, this and, is free. You know, this is volunteer. Um, and Disclaimer. You, know, <laughs> <laughs> so you could disclaimer for everybody that well, didn't know. Well, well, what I mean by that is, yeah, other, I mean, other cities that they have a strong mayor, former government, the mayor runs the city, you know, like in Houston and, mm -hmm. and they, they do get paid. Uh, other cities around the country, but, here in Texas, largely small cities, we, we don't. We're part-time, yeah. <laughs> part-time mayors. Yeah, uh, but uh, so I, I think to me that's what's the important thing is once you get into office, do something right. Like in other words, you're here. Campaign is over. In fact, I talked a lot about that when I got elected. You know, I thank 
everybody, hey, thank you for your support. Now it's time to work. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, there's That's no over. there's no yeah. time to Next. hey man, this guy didn't support me or this guy, you know, and, and yeah. or this guy says something. It's it's over. Like it, it campaign's over. And I, I kept on saying that and I remind everybody about that, you know, because um when you get elected, you know, you get calls about running for office or, or to be reminded, hey, don't forget, you know, this person didn't support you, that person didn't support you. It doesn't matter. And yeah. I think that's sometimes the the problem that we have, you know, in right. politics. You you kind of get sucked into that. And you you, you shouldn't right. because you're here to serve. You know, it's truly an honor, right, that you're given that opportunity to represent and do the best you can to serve the community. Now do something. Yeah. Um, because um, the pressure is there in terms of, you know, getting pulled into – well, there's this next race. There's, you know, there's maybe the a school board race, a county race. We have, how does that help our city? You know, right. when I get called, I did, how does that help our city? Yeah. What, what, right right and, now, your and job I'm is focused to, yeah, on the city. And, yeah. and, you know, when I get asked, well, what are you going to run for next? I said, I'm focused on the city. Yeah. And I, I have no desire about anything other than our city. The city's number one. Yeah. You know, and, um, it's important. The city deserves that. The residents deserve that. Yes, sir. I think that's huge, man. Uh, you, you, you made a comment that, uh, uh, you know what's wrong not necessarily wrong with politics but uh, one of the issues with politics is just that right you're you you got in and you're you have a job to do uh but if in two years you're gonna start running for another office i mean if you're already part-time here how much time do you can you really invest uh in the job that you currently have correct um man kudos right well it, it's about be fully committed. You yeah. know, I, 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 when people, that's what it takes I to do, be a good mayor. I, I get calls from people that are thinking about running or, or just for advice. And I'll talk to anybody, you know, I, I'll tell them, I mean, I, everything that I went through and it, cause yeah. it wasn't easy in terms of, you know, running a campaign and, and I'm very upfront with them and, and I always tell them you got to be fully committed. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not, a ver que, you know, we'll yeah. see what happened. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. This is because not for them, as a potential candidate, but just of what they're trying to do. I said, think of the people, man, mm -hmm. the residents, you know, like it's still ingrained in me, you know, some of the feedback that I would get, you know, when I visited people's homes, you know yeah. I mean? I mean, I, I learned a lot, you know, yeah. I, I listen a lot and, you know, I, a lot of how I am about things is because of that. Cause I don't forget that. You Those know? are right. real conversations. Yeah, I mean, people, you know, you want to find out how people feel, man, go to their home. Yeah. You know, and ask them and they're going to go to their you. home turf, <laughs> yeah. so to speak. Yeah. But so I always tell them you got to be fully committed, you know, yeah. and I, I see it. We're talking about UFC and boxing, right? You know, where they're going to box and you're, you're going to get into, you know, match, right? Right. I mean, you're inside the ring. You're you can't be ring, focused man. on you're, something else. You see what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. Once you're in the ring, man, I mean, it, it's time to fight in that case, right? Yeah. And that's how I see um, people campaigns, you know, and, and well, I'm going to leave it up to the people. Yeah, you're right. It, it's up to the people, but you got to do everything you can. And that's when I decided to run. I mean, it was a full contact sport. I, yeah. I don't mean that <laughs> like that. What I meant was, hey, man, you're out there pounding pavement, talking to people, doing everything you need to do to earn their support, yeah, you know, and, and that's why I tell people when they decided to run, it's, it's no different than when you start your business and do what you're going to do. Um, you have to be all in. Yeah. You have right. to be all in. The citizens deserve that. Whatever yeah. you're running for, man. I mean, yeah. I, you know, they, they, you're going to be their voice, <laughs> Yeah, right. you know, and, and you, you got to earn as much support as you can. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of where we, we got a podcast of builders, um, and uh, construction industry professionals, um, and I think uh, you know your your uh, your your message is is, is very clear. Um, we we got to serve. Uh, so you have an audience. Uh, what what can we do as a construction industry um, uh, uh, organization uh, to help you, Mr. Mayor? Well, uh, I'll start off by saying just. Any investment, just make sure it's in Edinburgh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> first um, and foremost. I know, right? No. I, first of all, my message is thank all of you for all that you do. I mean, I, it, I know it's a business, and I know, I'm, I, and, but I know it takes a lot. You know, thank you for all that you do because uh, for us as communities, you're, you're a stakeholder. I'm going to call you a stakeholder, right, the, the yeah. builder's community. And, you know. We all got some skin in the game we, one way or another. That's right. And. At the end, you know, I can talk about all these numbers. Oh, we got all these lots, all these developments, but it's only happened because you guys are taking the risk. Yeah. You know, so thank you. 
I'll yeah. start off with saying that for uh, taking on these risks and uh, taking a chance on our mm -hmm. area. Although some may argue that, well, you're not going to lose money. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I had somebody from out of the area that were visiting, they were looking to invest in a project here in the area, and they, they came by to talk to the city. And, and they said, we're really looking at the area because – we know we're not going to lose money. They're like, I mean, at, at least no we're, we're not yeah. going to lose money. Yeah, <laughs> so right. it was funny hearing somebody say that. Yeah. But so I, second, what I'll say is, you know, uh, continue giving us your feedback. Mm -hmm. Us as cities, we have our structures and systems in place, but there's always room for improvement. You guys are out there, you know, doing this day in and day out. You know, uh, keep on giving us your feedback on how it is that we can improve on what we do. Yeah, uh, for Edinburgh, it, it's really tough because of all that we have going on. But little things, you know, that you may see that that we can continue doing. The other thing is, you know, giving back to the community. I know you guys do that. You have some efforts underway on that. You know, I would just ask, hey man, keep keep that in mind. You yeah, know, on, keep on that things that uh, that opportunities that are there to to give back to the community. So so it, it's pretty simple to me. You know, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, keep on giving us your feedback and then stay engaged in the community. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just to touch on that and, and to kind of recap, uh, we've, we've met with the city a couple of times as, as an organization and, and I got to tell you, uh, because I'm in it, uh, I'm fully committed in my, in the company that I run, um, the structure and the homes that we build and, and, uh, and I'm in it on the, on the day to day. Uh, and I got construction superintendents that are out there and, uh, I, you know, I get the calls and, Hey, we're having issues here and we're having issues there. Uh, or, Hey, this, you know, the, 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 the code is unclear on this thing or, uh, we're stalled right now. Um, I got to tell you, man, if, since we started meeting, um, because I am fully in it, I, I can tell you it's gotten, it's gotten so much better. Oh yeah. It's truly. A work, it's a work in progress. Truly, okay. man. Like yes. it, 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 you notice the difference, and you learn stuff too. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we, with the la I want to say the last meeting that we came to, yeah, we didn't we didn't know that the city of Edinburgh had that grappler. Yeah, that was like that was cool. I was like, yeah. mm, okay. But just the uh, just the vibe and the whole relationship that we have now with the staff at the city, yeah, um, you can tell it's it's a uh, it's more of a what can we do to help each other out, right? And we're getting more involved, man. Yeah. That that. Night and day, Mr. Man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And that's uh, kudos to our staff. Yeah. I mean, they they for real. really have. And, you know, the other thing that I'll add in terms of what can y'all do, you know, if you see a city staff person, thank them too. Yeah. Because they go through a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was a city staffer myself. And, you know, I always, when I come to City Hall, I say hi to everybody that I can and, and just thank them because, you know, they're public servants, right? And, yeah. and um, by design, any, contact they have with residents it, it's not a pleasant one right, right. right. there's always like an that. issue that they, right they're, they're yeah. only Why talked to when there's an issue yeah. right they're only talked to because we're not yeah. doing something right okay i mean that, that's yeah. just so um, that puts it in I, perspective because day in day out yeah. it's like man how how often can you hear bad news or uh, or a problem or concern kind of hard yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know i always you know know that that you know, yeah. they're going from your issue to probably somebody else's yeah, issue. They just got know? done with somebody else. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, but that, I think that go a long way. Yeah. Uh, they work really hard. And for us here in our city, it, it's that much more of a challenge because yeah. we have so much going on. Yeah. Right. Uh, not mm -hmm. just in private um, construction, but we have public construction. You see this building sure. being built across from our city and other construction projects we yeah. have taken place. So, uh, yeah, so it's a tough job. It, it can be thankless at times, but... Uh, you know, they, they love what they do. Yeah. And that's what we try to take care of them. It's part of, we're going through the budget process. We always try to, you know, do Are what we can paid to, for to be there. Yeah. And, you know, we're about to do a compensation study yeah, to make nice. sure that we're, we're paying accordingly. Um, we're one of the only cities that pays 100% of their health insurance coverage mm -hmm. plus 50% of their dependents. Nice. Okay. So wow. it's a way for us to- <laughs> really give for a job maintain, at the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maintain that retention, you know, yeah. with our- uh, uh, employees and then we have a really good retirement program for them with that most cities have and and we match two to one um, on up to seven percent of the uh, you know what is set aside for the retirement so really really good benefits and uh, you know we need to take care of our employees. yeah absolutely awesome. I agree I had a, a question come in um, the question goes like this how is the city handling the influx of immigrants 
in the valley, if any here in Edinburgh? And how do the, does the city plan on bringing higher paying wage jobs to the individuals here in the city? Two so, questions. yeah, to answer the first part of the question, um, we're really not dealing right now with an influx of immigrants, uh, let's say like other cities had. Right. Um, you know, being that we're not right there on the border, we haven't had that um, a, a, as an issue for us. Um, but I, I know had been there for a little while and know that issue with that Title 42 uh, before it was lifted. There was a, a challenge there. But uh, we have not had to deal with that directly at this time. Right. Yes, know? sir. So, uh, but, um, I, you know, it, it's... I know it's a, the only thing I'll say to that also, it, I know it's a, a federal issue in that, you know, we have, we're in an international port of entry. I, I feel strongly that the issue has been highly politicized yes. in such a way that it, it's affected us. I went to a mayor's conference where all the mayors around the country and once people saw Texas, we're in Texas, Edinburgh, and I told them where, and right away they said, oh man, are, are you, everything okay down there? And, and, <laughs> and man, I, I, it just, it was so frustrating to me, yeah. right? Because... That is just an issue of it's the, a me fear. The, the media, yep. right, that was portrayed. And and uh, at the end of the day, it we're really relatively safe area. You I know, actually it, got and, a and call. I think one of the I safest areas in the country, yeah. to be honest with you. I got a call from uh, somebody um, from Florida, and he was like, hey, man, I just want to make sure that everything's okay out there, man. I, I, I see the news, and it, the immigrants is getting bad. And, I, and he was like, How, how's the streets over there? I was like... What are you talking about, man? I was like, everything's pretty calm. I mean, there's no. Yeah, I'm in a red light right now. <laughs> I, was like, I wish what? it was green. I, I mean... was like, what are? What? I was like, what are you hearing over there? Because there, I was like, everything's fine. There's nothing yeah. going on that's abnormal. Now, you know? do we have challenges of people, you know, crossing? You know, uh, right? We have. I mean, our our border patrol. It's important that we support them. They're doing their job, yeah. you know, and 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 what they do, and and we need to support them. You know, I know they they've had a challenging time. Um, but in my opinion, they've had a challenging time because as a federal government, we haven't, you know, approved anything that could help facilitate. Because right. on one hand, you know, people talk about, well, we need immigration because we need for the labor force. Of course. Right. right. But on the yeah. other is, no, no, we got to secure our border. We, well, which is it? Right. We, and it, I think that the answer should, has to be, you know, somewhere in between. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it takes so long and anybody doesn't know. To go through just the process right now to just get a visa. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. let's fix that. Like, how do we, you know, and um, and no, not everybody that crosses is, you know, coming to do wrong here. Right. Right. I mean, it, it just uh, so anyway. I know we kind of went off uh, no, on no, that question, I'm, but <laughs> but we're not directly as a city uh, having problems dealing with that. Yeah. It's not an issue uh, at this time. Just my thanks to the border patrol, you know, for all that they do. And, and if it and was an issue, it would be it would be evident. It would be something that you would see on the daily. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't. I mean, I like to say uh, it's pretty bad, but I live out on the streets. You know, my life is on the streets. Yeah, I and mean, granted, you know, we're always out, out and about. You know, our jobs are out, making sure things are getting done. You know, every day. So that's why when I got that call, uh, and it's like you said, it's it's. Uh, I personally believe that the media is is you know in a way um, pushing fear onto people. Yeah, and and you know going back to I agree, and and going back to uh, the need to work together mm -hmm. collaboratively. That's part of the other reason, right? right. That's yeah. why the summits can be so important. Yeah. Let's get the I, right I, information I, out. I, I remember I'll never forget when I first got elected. I don't know a few two three months afterwards. We we're at our fire station. We we're talking about, oh, it, it, you know, the COVID was still happening. There was a spike in the numbers when I first got like in January of 22, I remember. And I formed a task force, a uh, public health task force, because I started getting calls from parents saying, should I send my kids to school? And I, I was thinking, I, I'm not a medical professional, but they're calling me because I'm the mayor. I'm supposed to know everything, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I said, I, this is not a good thing. I need to know everything that's happening and what is the right thing to do. So I brought together all the hospitals, the both Doctors Hospital, Renaissance House, Edinburgh Regional, the School of Medicines here in Edinburgh, the health department, and we form a task force to discuss what are the numbers, what is accurate information, right? How do we make sure we're all on the same page, right? Right. And and get those resources out. So created a web page, COVID resource. If somebody wanted to get tested, what do you can get? I mean, we did all those things to just help. But I remember we were at the fire station. Uh, talking about that and the media was there because they wanted to cover this task force that we had formed and they asked one or two things about that and all the media was i'm talking about the local media mm -hmm. 
But then one of them asked me, <laughs> asked me, well, what are your thoughts, Mr. Mayor, about the, uh, I think at the time, the U.S. attorney, or not U.S., excuse me, our attorney general for the state of Texas, Ken Paxton, was at our airport as I was having this meeting at our Edinburgh airport with 12 or 13 other attorney generals having a press conference at our uh, airport to make an announcement that they were suing the Biden administration because of how he's not securing the border, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and that, and they were having a, they want to have an immigration summit to address this issue with immigration. Right. And I mean, so she asked me that and I said, you know, and, and I said, well, my response to that is look, Yes. Do we have our challenges in our region? Yes. But if we're going to have an immigration summit, have it, then let's have an economic summit yeah. in the afternoon because we're a lot more than just this issue. Right. right? I mean, there, we're a vibrant area. We're a great place to invest. There's so many opportunities in here. So let's be fair. I mean, yes, fine. Let's have an immigration summit to discuss yeah. those issues. Right. But let's have an economic summit as well. Right. And, and they did kind of carry that on. I did get a couple calls by people from upstate, you know, they, you know, they're just like, Hey man, I'm glad you said that. Or, you know, and I said, well, I, I spoke my mind. Like I, it's just real frustrating for us that live here. Yeah. You know, that, you know, people come from around the country. That's the label for and, some reason and, for yeah. us. But There's to me, to do we have our challenges? Yes. You know, and, and we can discuss that as right. part of a, in fact, I even said, let's have an immigration summit in the morning and then the economic summit in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. And so, I, so that's why I'm so happy that uh, going back to your question about um, the, you know, what we're doing about immigrants, that we're coming together as a region so that together we'll really promote what's happening right. in our in our area. Yeah. You know, it's not just Edinburgh. It's no, the, the, the region is what's happening. And high paying jobs, uh, to answer that question. So coming together as a region, believe it or not, that's going to help us with exactly. that. Exactly. Yep. And you know why? Because we're going to be able to put our numbers together and, and show what all the skills and, and talent that we have here. Mm -hmm. Not only that, other employers that we have here that are being successful in, in, in what they do um, and promote that, you know, yeah. as a region. And uh, I have no doubt we can get some of those uh, high paying jobs here. Yeah. I definitely think the, the everybody coming together, like you say, as a region, is going to just make the valley grow even more. Mm -hmm. Like, way, way more. Yeah, I agree. Um, I walked into this podcast today, really excited to uh, talk to you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, we walked in the uh, uh, front door. Mr. Serda walks out yeah. of, of the uh, uh, planning and zoning or uh, building uh, department. Um, I'm happy to see him, right? We work uh, together. Um, he truly is somebody that is there to help out. Uh, it's very evident. Yep. Um, we had a quick discussion about, Hey, I got an idea for this house where, you know, we're doing it. I'm doing it with a, a partnering up with a, a buddy of mine that, that does glass. And we're, we're trying to create a, a really cool home, just something really different. Uh, that's all glassed out and, and, um, uh, in the garage, we want to do some really cool stuff. And so I'm, I'm getting some advice from him. And, uh, um, for me, and then, you know, and I walk, all right, well, I'm about to go uh, interview um, uh, uh, y'all's mayor. Um, and so, um, so let me get going, right? And, uh, we, you know what, thanks for the tacos the other day, Mr. Settler. We sent tacos to, uh, to the city, uh, to, the, to, to the staff there. Um, man, that's what it's all about. You know, I'm thinking about it in my head, and I'm thinking, uh how cool is it to just be able to walk into the city, know the people, know yep. that they're they're here to to help, that it's all good, positive things that you know, we broke bread together, right? We shared some tacos, um, and we're about to go talk to the mayor and you know, talk about some more cool stuff that the city's going to do. Um, that's awesome, man. Well, thank it's, you. It's part I, of the community. It, it's you know, I, even though I serve as mayor, it, it's not about me. It's about you know, it's about us. It's people, about everybody. It's about the community. Yeah. Um, you know, we're here at this time and, and serving and we're going to do the best we can. Uh, but the idea here, going back to your question earlier, is how do we continue this? Yeah. You know, and we make have sure to. that that stability is there yeah. where yes, there's sir. no other option where you just step in and just, all right, this is a city. This is, you know, we, we you know, my goal is to also improve on what we do from just a, even at just a customer service standpoint, right? Yeah. We, I, we do a great job, but we need to build on that, yeah. you know, because um, 
people uh, at this time, it, it's hard for them to know where do I complain? Where, where do I, sure. how do I fix this? Yeah. How do I, you know what I mean? And so yep. our job is to put things in place that makes it easier for them. Yep. Does that make sense? Like, Absolutely. You know, yeah. We and I think from comfort. like as chairman of the organization, uh, I, I share the same sentiment with you in that the biggest success that I will have had as the chairman is if it continues uh, the way that we thought of it, right? The way that we put this together, the idea that we had, so long as that continues, I will have con uh, considered it, uh, a success. It, it considered a success. Yeah. And so part of that is just to share that, to share that story with the rest of the builders, like, Build a relationship with Mr. Zerda. He's really cool, right? Yeah. Don't don't forget to bring some tacos every now and then to the staff. It'll help you. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be a little bit more open to answer your questions and listen and guide you, you and listen. Yeah. If you're just another citizen, human being that cares about them, that they you know they care about you, and we're just trying to do some cool stuff and and uh, build our communities. Keep that going, right? Uh, uh, if 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 you're a builder, and you're listening. Do that stuff. We it's have, simple. Uh, it's not that complicated. We had a uh, question just come in from uh, a fellow builder. He put, do you see in the future where the cities in Hidalgo County becoming just one metropolis, what metropolis area? Uh, I guess when they all come together, would you see something like that forging uh, if, if that would ever happen? So structurally, I, I obviously we all have our boundaries, right? So yeah, right. limits and all that. But, you know, how we're acting, though, is as one, really, yeah, right. at this time. That's um, the point. Yeah, that's you the know, idea. Uh, I think you mentioned earlier how, for example, our city limits in Edinburgh, if you go down Jackson Road south, once you come across Owasa Road, you know, if you go south of that, it, you know, to the east is far <laughs> and to the west is McAllen, yeah. right? I mean, there's three cities well, in Well, DHR, I think, right, is in McAllen and Edinburgh. Uh, correct, correct. The, the campus. south side of yeah, is, yeah. is McAllen, <laughs> the north side is Edinburgh. So, but, you know, I started talking about this earlier that we actually don't have a choice, right? I mm -hmm. mean, we have to work together for mm -hmm. the benefit of our residents. Um, and But I do see that, and, and I'm seeing that more now um, because uh, yesterday, uh, you know, we had a meeting with uh, Palm Valley, you know, uh, yeah. from the animal shelter. Uh, we're working on an initiative where all the cities can, can work together on that issue, right? So awesome. it's a big challenge we're having. But we're going to start seeing that and more issues, uh, you know, than, than what, uh, let's say, water or different, you know, basic things. Um, now I'm excited to say it on the economic development side, marketing yeah. together. Yeah, I that's going to be awesome. That's going to be big. Yeah. You know, putting our numbers together. Uh, I mean, we compete with just about anybody in the whole region. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. He had uh, something added to that question. It was, and if they we all do come together, what would we call ourselves? <laughs> what would it be named? <laughs> well, we already have that name. It's a Rogan Valley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, RGV. It, to me, it, we we you know forget that. Don't forget, yeah. I mean, everybody from. outside of here sees us as the valley. The yeah. valley. We're the only one sometimes that yeah. see ourselves as forty four cities, right? But everybody outside of here, it's already it's a valley. It's a yeah. valley. It's the Rogan Valley. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I went to, I traveled recently to this mayor's conference and I always have to be reading. I can't sleep on the plane. I, I always <laughs> have to be reading something. And I, I came across this, uh, Robert Carroll, which is a, he's an, an, um, an author and he wrote about, um, LBJ and, you know, things like that. Okay. And, and it, it was just, it was interesting to me because, uh, you know, it talks about that, you know, how, um, you know, people, uh, use power for example like once you get a certain amount of power how it's used and um but in that in that book he you know he talked about how you know when linda b johnson former president became senator um in 1948 largely there was he had lost the night of the election but two weeks after or something like that there was a uh, a ballot box that was found that there was enough votes that helped him win. <laughs> There's a big story behind yeah. that, that, you know, it's called box 13 that you can look it up, but it's funny in that book because it's a national book, right? In nature, but it talks about, well, there was the people from the Valley. <laughs> really? Even back then, like there was a box connected to yeah, something about the Valley. And it, it, it just struck me, right? Because wow. even then people look, they, they don't look at it as Browns or, or, or McAllen or Edinburgh. Yeah. It was a Valley. Right. I mean, so for a long time, uh, I say that just to say it's not wow. anything new that right. people are looking at us as the valley. It's for a long time. 
you know, that's how uh, we've looked at. We're the only ones that see ourselves different. What yeah. book was that that you were reading? So it's Robert Carroll. So it's it's uh, it, there's four editions of he writes about Lyndon B. Johnson, his story when he became president and then when he was president. And there's apparently a fifth edition that he hasn't released that talks about him later in life. But that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Look it up, man. If you like to that's read awesome. or keep, I love history. Yeah, that's and cool. My wife loved history. The only thing I always tell her, I was like, I love Texas history though. I like, yeah, you're like my son. Connections my son the same way. to our region, yeah. right? Like, how did how did that come to be? That's and, awesome. Uh, but um, but going back to, I, I just think that it's up to all of us to make sure that we promote our areas. Yeah. One, you know, one region, one voice. Yep. So. So yeah, what's it going to be called? Fellow builder. The Valley. It's, it's the Rio Grande Valley, man. The Rio Grande Valley. It's already got a name. 956. Nine, <laughs> or, or we can change it to Puro 956. I love it. I love oh, it, man. man. I love our community. I really do, too. And and uh, I just want to say thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank uh, we you appreciate so your no, time. You. We know you're busy. You gave us quite a bit of uh, no, quite thank, a bit of time. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, anytime I can... Sit here, promote our city. I'm going to do it. Yeah, man. Awesome. <laughs> you awesome. need anything from uh, from the builders or from our organization, uh, we're here to help. Thank you. Yep. I appreciate it. Thank you. And keep on doing what y'all do. Yeah. And appreciate all y'all do. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cool. We good? Awesome.